Salutations. Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez, joined as always by my co-host, my husband and my brother. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. Hi, I'm Travis Hunter. This week, we are recording live from Happy Hanbok discussing the 2009 South Korean supernatural romantic horror film, Thirst. This film is directed by Park Chan-wook with a screenplay by Park Chan-wook and So Kyung Jong, loosely based off the story by Emile Zola. Thirst is equal parts vampire tale and tragic love story. Equipped with a talented cast and a renowned director, this film navigates through themes of love, grief, faith, and suicide, all while delivering enough blood to satisfy any horror fan. Thirst was recommended to us by friend of the show, Kristen Lofton, and it was the winner of our February Patreon poll. So thank you to all of our patrons who participated and voted. And if you want to help us pick an episode, join us over on the Patreon at patreon.com slash the podmortem. So what did you guys think about Thirst the first time you saw it? I had never heard of this movie, Mm -hmm. but this was good. I did enjoy it. Uh, Yay! (laughs) This is an interesting take on a vampire movie, Mm -hmm. uh, but I did enjoy it. I will say that. Uh, It is good. Uh, Crazy shit going on here. (laughs) Yes, I would agree. I am. First of all, I'm glad that you enjoyed it because as I was watching it, I was like, this is this could go either way. Uh, (laughs) He's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Very difficult to gauge. I, I and I did at the beginning. I kind of was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "Let's see where this goes." Mm-hmm. But I did. I was like, "All right," you know. I was like, "I, I am enjoying this." I am much like you. Mm-hmm. There are three things that I knew to be true going into this. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Park Chan Wook. Mm-hmm. Right. Big fan of Song Kong Ho. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've never heard of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like so surprised that, I mean, looking into it, right? it's nominated for the Palma d'Or mm-hmm. at Cannes Film Festival. Right. So I'm like, you know, this was not like some A tiny sleeper, film. Yeah. Right, right, you know, right. so I'm like, how the fuck did I never hear this? Yeah. But not only am I glad that they voted it in on Patreon, mm-hmm. because I think that this is going to be a film that I watch a lot now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just think it's really awesome to still have films to discover. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. You know? It's always good. Because, I mean, not that I've seen every film ever made or anything. Right. But I feel like we've all accumulated quite the yeah. catalog. Library. <laughs> yeah. So to find one that I'd never even heard of is pretty incredible. Oh, no. Yeah. And it gives it that excitement. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. To, you don't know what the hell yeah. is going to happen. And coming from this director, you're like, I know it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was not disappointed at all. No. First time watching it yesterday, I watched it twice. Hey. I, I think my thing about it, like you were alluding to, JP, mm-hmm. it's not your standard vampire film. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your standard romance film. No. They look at things at such a, in a, like a real way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is very intriguing to me. A lot of subgenres, as you put in your intro. Yeah. yeah. I was like, how many words can I yeah. cram in here before people are like, okay, yeah, <laughs> like, that's, got that's it. enough. Uh, comedy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it like takes on everything. And it's got a lot to say about a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of themes just from what I was looking at, change, circumstance, mm-hmm. guilt, societal expectation. I mm-hmm. feel like you can almost get another facet of it every time you watch it. Yeah. Right. I think that's very fair and very like good, well-rounded characters. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that kind of go through a lot. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had seen this once before. My friend Kristen, the one that had recommended it to us, moved to a different town, mm-hmm. and so every time she would come to visit, she would bring movies, or I would bring movies to the table that we were excited to watch together. And she got this on DVD solely because it was Park Chan Wook. Oh, well. And neither one of us had ever seen it before. I'd never even heard of it before. Mm -hmm. Um, So we watched it and I, my fucking mind was blown. I was like, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I never saw it again. And so when we were trying to come up with like romantic horror films to put on the poll, I was like, hey, throw thirst on there. Yeah positive that it would not win (laughs) positive that it wouldn't win but i'm like at least we can get people talking about it maybe somebody will see it um so i am fucking thrilled that it did and that we get to cover it now because i feel like it's so for some reason slept on yeah like i i fully don't understand how it's not in the conversation more Mm -hmm. because it is a super powerful film it is a horror film but there's so much depth to it like you were saying t it's like 
very deep. Mm -hmm. And um, I just love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> and this film like ran away with it in the poll. Yeah. It did. Like, oh, yeah. That's why I was it wasn't like, even close. I was like, I know it's not going to win. And then we checked and I was like, okay, it pulled ahead. Uh, it's staying ahead. I was like, there's no fucking way. But and there were other good films in the yeah, poll too. There were that will probably get the cover in the future. We will oh, for yeah. sure. I was looking into some of, I guess, the background of this film, mm -hmm. and I was very intrigued to learn that Park Chan Wook came up with this idea in 2000. Right. And he was working on his first feature with Song Kang Ho, mm -hmm. and he asked him to star in it back then, and he agreed. And yeah. so for like eight, nine years. He is chipping away at this idea eventually Damn. becomes what this is. Yeah. And also, I kind of, there are some slight parallels between this and Midnight Mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, yes. And I didn't, like I said, I had only seen this the one time. And obviously, I've seen Midnight Mass much more recently. I didn't even clock it watching Midnight Mass. Right. No. And then when I started working on this, I was like, huh. <laughs> 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 okay. I read that Park Chan Wook, I read in the New York Times, he grew up Catholic as well. So it almost feels like the starting place for Midnight Mass and yeah. this were, you know, the blood of Christ, vampirism, right, right. kind of intertwining in a way. Yeah. yeah. I thought right. it was very interesting. Well, one thing I will say, and it, this is not in Midnight Mass that is in Thirst. I was warned that yeah. this I did well, I, I was gonna say fucking I was warned that this film was quite horny yeah. but I wasn't warned that it would be this horny. Yeah. <laughs> now before we set a rock on this film, we would like to issue a warning for spoilers. Podmortem is a very in-depth podcast, and in thoroughly discussing horror films, we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two. If you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, then let's drink. So I know I've already given this disclaimer when we covered Train to Busan, mm -hmm. but in the time between then and now, I did not learn Korean, unfortunately. So uh, again, I've tried my best to research how to say everyone's name and be very respectful. But if I fuck up, like, don't come for me too hard, please. Well, you did have plenty of time to learn Korean. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> right in the year or whatever. Yeah, it's episode 22. You mean you're not fluent in, in Korean yet? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the film opens on the sun coming up, illuminating a hospital door. Shadows from leaves in the window cast on the door in the wall. And I was like, this is fucking beautiful. Like from the from mm -hmm. jump. That is like literally the first thing I wrote down. I, I was like, tell me why. From this first shot, I already know the film's going to be great. <laughs> like, at least it's going to look great. Yeah, like, right. At the very least. The cinematographer was Chung Chung Hun. Mm -hmm. He is very much in Wook's filmography. Mm -hmm. But he also, I think we discussed him, he did the cinematography for It Chapter One. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. nice. Very versatile. Yeah. But everything he touches, mm -hmm. it's Beautiful. just incredible work. Yeah. yeah. It looked really good. I I was like, are the leaves dancing? But yeah. it's kind yeah, of what breeze, like a yeah. sped up. Yeah. And the sound design of the leaves, you can yeah. hear them. Yeah, just wow. There's something there. And if you want to look at it thematically, mm -hmm. you got the sunlight. Yes, yeah. I mean, life yeah. in the sun, whatever. No big deal. We literally, nothing has happened yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> we saw a door. <laughs> But, I mean, if you go back to when we covered Hereditary, the first shot of a film... Mm. Yeah, it sets, your, it sets you up. Yeah. Right. yeah. But a priest, Song Hyun, played by Song Kong Ho, walks in and closes the door behind him. Now, we love this dude. Yeah. yeah. No, he's fantastic. I feel like even if you're not well-versed, I know in uh, South Korean films, I know a lot of people saw Parasite, mm -hmm. and he was the dad in Parasite, and holy shit. Man. Yeah. I... Man, I was blown away by that yeah. film. Yeah. Also, The Host. I don't know if you've seen The Host. I haven't. It's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, Memories of Murder. That Ooh. is a fantastic film. He's in a uh, friend of the show, May, from Horrorsperia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She suggested it, and I will never look back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll definitely have to watch it. Speaking of Bong Joon-ho, though, who did Parasite, mm -hmm. I, this has nothing to do with the film, but I just wanted to add a little like flavor to Song Kong-ho, <laughs> his like, legend or whatever, because he's huge over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. He had, I guess, and I went back and looked on his IMDb, and this is one of the first roles he ever had. He played a gangster in a film called 
green fish mm-hmm. <laughs> and Bong Joon Ho saw him in it and apparently everybody thought that he they pulled a gangster off the street to yeah. play <laughs> the role because he was so amazing yeah. or whatever and so when Bong Joon Ho he was just an assistant director at the time yeah. when he found out that that dude's an actor he's not really a gangster yeah. he was like I have to meet him I'm gonna be making films I want him in my films yeah. so it was 1997 they set up a fucking fake audition like an audition are you kidding uh, me there was no <laughs> film there was no nothing <laughs> and he came he was like we didn't have him read for anything we just talked and, and made uh, him coffee <laughs> but <laughs> I thought that was the funniest fucking yeah, thing dude that like, is amazing I have to meet yeah luckily it turned out better for Bong Joon-ho than yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no bag in his apartment no. or anything. <laughs> I just thought that was the funniest thing. I read on the production notes they consider him the quote Tom Hanks of South Korea. Damn. So like that's a pretty yeah. big <laughs> He's amazing he though. Is. Everything he's in. Yeah. Jeez, Tom Hanks. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a high bar. No, yeah. <laughs> but back to the film. <laughs> Nurse Sa, played by Choi Hee Jin, listens as a patient. Hyo Sang, played by So Dong Su, describes an event from his past. He struggles to breathe as he tells the story of a day where he carried around a big yellow sponge cake. I think he said he get in his bosom. Yeah. <laughs> Close to his heart. <laughs> he was just about to eat it when he saw a girl carrying her sister on her back. And it was clear to him that the two of them were starving. So even though he turned to eat the cake at first... <laughs> <laughs> when he said that I was like dude <laughs> he, did say that. <laughs> he eventually gave it to the sisters who ate it quickly he laments that he will never have a cake like that again but he finally asked Song Hyun if God will remember this good deed even though it was 30 years ago the priest smiles at him and answers absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he says that remembering is God's specialty and the nurse agrees comforted Hyo Sung asks for the priest to play him a song again we cut to Song Hyun rushing to gather his flute, but even though he returns to the room super fast, Hyo Sung is now gasping for air and Nurse Saw is frantic. She starts to breathe into the patient's mouth and the priest assists her with chest compressions. How did they do? I will no. be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Hand placement, fantastic. Hey. Yeah. And now he did only get five compressions, but on the second cycle, he was interrupted. So <laughs> he I, was. I will allow... You know. Yeah, my next note here is, but the doctor comes in and interrupts them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he looks kind of annoyed. The doctor? Yeah, yeah he well, does. He, <laughs> he's like checking his watch and shit. He's like, How fucking many move. Fucking... I did want to point out, like as he's running to the room where he keeps his instrument, yeah. right. everything in this place is so drab. Yeah, oh, it yeah. is. Like the production design on this film is amazing because as it... Like we said at the top, change is a big thing in this film. Yeah. And as you watch the film, not only do like the characters change, right. yeah. their clothes change, yeah. uh-huh. the fucking sets change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's really incredible. It's like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Song Hyun prays silently as they begin to use a defibrillator on Hyo Sung. I think he still should have played the song. <laughs> <laughs> it's what he asked for. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that too. I was like, you could be like, play, yeah, damn it. Playing yeah. Playing your flute while they try to bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> now that is not part of CPR. Just <laughs> <laughs> just I gotta learn to play the flute. Yeah. Fuck. It's how uh, you it's the last test of the day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we cut to Song Hyun speaking to Nurse Yu, played by Ra Mi Ron, in a confession booth. He tells her that those who try to communicate directly with God are often prone to self-hatred because the devil will eat right into you. He cites St. Bruno, who said suicide is to die a martyr for Satan. Suicide, he says, is worse than first degree murder and worth a life sentence in hell. Interesting. Yeah. The nurse cries as he tells her to say 20 Hail Marys, get out into the sun and take a cold shower. I'm I, My knee jerk is like, are you fucking like, come yeah. on, dude. But then yes. he tells her to get God's help through science and get some antidepressants. I was like, OK. Yeah. Because yeah. it felt very much like, oh, you have the sads. Go exercise. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, no. Well, yeah. the thing that got me is like, you heard of sunlight? Right. Yeah. Works like, wonders. Damn like, God damn it, dude. But again, sun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good point. But he tells her to stop thinking about killing herself and to forget the bastard that dumped her. Nurse Yu finally speaks up that she'll deal with the bastards and all the worldly matters. He can just stick to praying. What was that about? She's going to kill the guy. That- <laughs> yeah. She's like, like God damn. Leave yeah. it to me. Yeah. I'll deal with the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> 
In the next scene, Song Hyun pushes Priest Ro, played by Park In Wan, in a wheelchair in a courtyard, asking him to get the bishop to send him to Emmanuel Labs. Priest Ro wears dark sunglasses and tells him that the Vatican doesn't approve of the experiment going on over there. Song Hyun tells him that someone named Sarah died after eight surgeries yesterday and Hyo Sung went into a coma. So I was like, at least he's still alive. Yeah. Hyo Sung is the sponge cake guy. I was very sad to see what happened to him. So knowing that he's still alive. Oh, yeah, because yeah. he was, I mean, I was feeling his story about the cake. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of that the Festivus episode of Seinfeld when he is arguing with the guy in the store over the toy and he's like, and as I rain blows down, <laughs> like I was like, that was when he was like, I, and I turned to eat I it. I was going to eat it. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> was that like his only one good deed? Is I that guess, why he yeah. remembered well, he it? he said it was 30 From years, 30 years yeah. ago. He's yeah, like, I've been like, a real shit. He's like, yeah. I did something nice once. Okay. I really fucking wanted that cake. The price into heaven is one yeah, sponge the, cake. Yeah. <laughs> one bosom hey, warmed he sponge said, cake. Yeah, said it was warm. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> but Sang Hyun says it kills him just to watch everyone dying. But Priest Ro takes control of his own chair and starts to leave, saying no one even knows what goes on in that lab. Sang Hyun quietly says in his defense, I want to save people. Priest Ro turns on him. He says that ever since Sang Hyun was in his crib, he told him to go to medical school, study ophthalmology, and heal his eyes. When Song Hyun asserts that he has to go, Priest Rowe is like, I'll give you absolution. And then he's like, you should just stick to confessions. Yeah. It's like, God. But then he goes all Fargo because he's like, geez. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> this surprised me. You want to know how religiously ignorant I am? Huh. When he had said that he, since he was in his crib yeah. and he's calling him father, I was like, this is his dad? John Paul well, asked well, that too. Well, I, well, because the way he's, you know, like deferring to him, I yeah. get yeah. his respect and it's whatever. But it's, I was like, so is this also his dad? Or that's, you I was know? like, did they both go into the priesthood? Can you do that? And I was like, I well, can well, they have yeah. children? And then I went down a rabbit hole. You're and like, then oh wait, thirty minutes had passed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then later on, I realized I'm like, oh shit, he's just his superior. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, probably should have <laughs> scratched well, off a couple notes. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I, I got that part, but it was like, uh, ma- like you said, maybe he went in and he brought his kid with them or he changed his life and you know, something happened to the mom or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was like, is this also his dad and like the leader of the church? I was like, I don't understand what's happening. It was the way I think seeing the word father and then he's like, no, oh, yeah. since he was in his crib, I was like, oh, he grew up with this. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a baby. that's what yeah. I was like. like oh, okay. Minute. Yeah. But we see Song Hyun writing letters, flying on a plane and arriving at his destination, Emmanuel Memorial Biochemical Labs. And we hear him reading one of his letters. He apologizes for leaving so quickly and not saying goodbye to his patients. And he says that he packed a lot of stuff, but the monastery prepared a luxury hotel for him and told him to only bring his body. None of this is true. Yeah. Um, especially the luxury hotel. Part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Inside the labs, the Emmanuel Research Director, played by Eric Abouane, speaks in English and shows slides as he explains the Emmanuel virus. And this thing is fucking rough. He clicks through the slides without even looking at them and speaks in monotone like he's done this a hundred times before. Mm -hmm. So this isn't, it's like groats from Curb, like it's not a real disease. I hope. (laughs) Didn't you say the same thing? (laughs) This isn't real. Uh, Because I mean... (laughs) Just something seems off. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if sure I want to be here. At least I don't want it to yeah. be. <laughs> but he says once infected with the virus, the symptoms start with blisters on the limbs, then the lips, eyelids, inside of the nose. That's when I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. God. Oh, come on, man. Then the middle of the body through the respiratory and digestive tracts. The blisters gather, grow, and burst. If lesions form in the muscles, they grow into big ulcers and hemorrhage. If the virus reaches internal organs, the infected person coughs up blood until they die of excessive bleeding. So it, if it sounds like a lot of diseases kind of... Mushed yeah, together. Yeah. 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 I really hope this isn't real. (laughs) (laughs) The research director finishes the slides, stands and opens the window with this closer. There is no cure for the virus. If Song Hyun catches it during the experiment, all is lost. That's what this man says. Fantastic. He turns on a video camera and asks, instead of the usual answer, what's the real purpose for him volunteering for this experiment? He says that people come here thinking that prayer is useless and they want to commit a dramatic suicide. This is discouraging to them because it's hard for them to distinguish who wants martyrdom and who just wants suicide. 
he asks Song Hyun if he's one of these people and Song Hyun answers him in English that his prayers work just fine. This is a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I mean, I respect Song Hyun yeah. Yeah. for doing something so noble, uh, but I mean, this is a lot. <laughs> yeah. The, just the description yeah. of... <laughs> I, it's too much. <laughs> like I, this is. I feel like this PowerPoint probably turns a lot yeah. of people away. <laughs> I feel I, it's bad because he's like blisters on your limbs, and I'm like, well, yeah, you know, when I he can... said the inside of the nose, uh, I'm like, yeah. I'm out. My I'm nose sorry. is already fucked, <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> I'm sorry. I I don't think I can do this. <laughs> One thing that did make me laugh was he walks around the table to talk to him, uh-huh. and then he asks him a question, and he's like, no, answer in the camera. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why'd you walk around the table then? <laughs> Stay back there. But the the way that he opens the shutters yeah. mm-hmm. and the sun beams in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. very interesting, mm-hmm. repeated kind yeah. of a thing, you know, for good reason. Yeah. But as Song Hyung walks into an EV ward, this is what we're calling the virus, mm-hmm. the manual virus EV. He follows a nurse played by Toddy Pele, who speaks to him also in English. She says that since Father Emmanuel has isolated the virus, there hasn't been one African among the 600 victims. They're all Caucasian or Asian. Song Hyun looks at the patients as the nurse says that over 80% of the patients have been single male missionaries. She says that this is why they've been calling it the curse of Bazira. Bazira is the goddess of widows. She leads Song Hyun to an empty bed and goes through the steps with him. First, he'll receive the vaccine, then an inactive strain of EV. They can then watch if the vaccine performs the way that it's supposed to. I did think it was interesting the last time she says EV. Mm -hmm. It sounds like she says Eve. And yeah. it's almost like because this is like biblical. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And especially for him, it's preceding something. Yeah. It, right. You know. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I didn't know if that was a little cue for us. That's interesting. Later, in the dark ward, with his head bowed, we hear Song Hyun's prayers to Jesus. I'm going to read them because they're very morbid and fucked up. And we hear them several times throughout the film. I was confused. Go ahead and read them and then I'll ask. Yeah, okay. Like a leper rotting in flesh, let all avoid me. Like a cripple without limbs, let me not move freely. Remove my cheeks that tears may not roll down them. Crush my lips and tongue that I may not sin with them. Pull out my nails that I may grasp at nothing. Let my shoulders and back be bent that I may carry nothing. Like a man with a tumor in the head, let me lack judgment. Ravage my body sworn to chastity. Leave me with no pride and have me live in shame. Let no one pray for me, but only the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ have mercy on me. This is his prayer. But honestly, now that I'm reading it again, I'm like, no, hold on. I mean, there's some foreshadowing here. There is. No, yeah. But so he wants to be sick? Because I heard the all avoid me thing, but uh, yeah. But then the rest is like, I fuck me up, fam. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, no. I kind of think it, it's what um, what the research director was saying. Mm-hmm. I think that he is kind of done, and this is a way that he can die while trying to help people. Right. This That's my interpretation. I think that's understandable. I mean, my th- I went and looked this up. Right. Because I was like, is this is it a real? passage? Right, right. It's just the film. Yeah. Uh, so I was right. like, this is coming from him. Yeah. yeah. You know? Like, he isn't just parroting something he's right, heard right, or right. read in the past yeah, so right. maybe he is like let me just get sick and i was like damn why dude you seen yeah yeah yeah, well, yeah were you yeah. not looking at were you not watching those <laughs> yeah, slides man but, <laughs> the camera. Like, well. <laughs> yeah say it to the camera uh but i mean i think that for him dying a useful death yeah. right i think that's worth when it to him. it's All helping right, people yeah. as well yeah. you know so i mean there's and no we'll you know unpack more as the mm-hmm. film goes along but it, it's a lot yeah when i was reading it i was like that's horrible <laughs> like why are you saying that the, the longer it went i was like yeah, this is this yeah. very <laughs> insensitive <It's getting> worse. <laughs> <laughs> but as he prays we see doctors in hazmat suits administering his doses one month later song hyun writes a letter saying that it's been one full month we see him playing volleyball happily with the other patients as he's talking about it, but in actuality, he's sitting writing his letter in a room by himself. Mm-hmm. 
He says that the hotel owner gave him her best room because he's handsome. But yeah, he's sitting in a tiny drab room with one window. And also his roommate, a centipede. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's his roommate. Well, that's the best room. You get to share a room. <laughs> In the letter, he says that the sunlight has left his skin tanned and peeling. But in actuality, we see that there are blisters all over his hands and he peels a nail right off of his finger. Which is part of his prayer. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Later, he begins to play his flute until he starts coughing up blood. Blood pours all over the flute on the outside, but goes through the inside as well, pouring out of the bottom and spilling out of the holes. I have two things here. Mm -hmm. One, it looked incredible. Yes, it did. Oh, yeah, very metal. Yeah. (laughs) It was was from the Kiss (laughs) stage show. Yeah. I did. I will say that the playing of the flute at the start was quite peaceful and beautiful. Right, right. I think he was actually playing because from the little featurette that I saw, he was practicing the flute. Oh, wow. I do think the ending of this song was a little avant-garde. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) This is like weird stage of Beatles. Yeah. It's like I it was good until the blood I mean, yeah. that kinda lost me, but it's like Revolution Nine, <laughs> but <laughs> But with more blood. But with more blood. <laughs> well, he's sick now. Yes. That's he what is, he wanted. He, yes. Yeah, it is. But we see that now there are blisters all over his face and Song Hyung chokes on his own blood and falls over. We cut to a hospital where four doctors watch as they give Song Hyun a blood transfusion. When he still flatlines, they give the time of death as 3.31 p.m. They cover Song Hyun's body. He's still covered in blisters mm-hmm. with dried blood all over his mouth, but they cover him in his white sheet. They begin to shut off all the machines, but everyone stops when Song Hyun begins to pray from underneath the sheet. He's repeating that morbid prayer that he said earlier. The doctors remark on his skin and they all stare in disbelief. So firstly, mm-hmm. blood is very important. Right, right. Yeah. This will come up again later where I will ask a question that I don't really know the answer to. Okay. But I feel like this really first of all it has nothing to do with the research per se right it's kind of just a byproduct of something that has happened mm-hmm. so i don't even know that this will help the doctors at all i don't think so. <laughs> but <laughs> i don't well the vaccine didn't work yeah. no <laughs> that's true. but i will say the shot of him whispering his prayer yeah was kind of frightening it was it was like the first like Creepy sign thing. of yeah, yeah. well through god everything possible <laughs> so right. that that down. <laughs> it, it was cool though because he's i didn't expect that no no and that caught me off guard and he, i was like is he fucking praying again i was like it does work and mm-hmm. he came back to life he <laughs> did come back yes. to life six months later song hyun descends stairs where a crowd of people wait for him his face and hands are completely bandaged but they beg for him to pray over them or touch them one holds a huge crucifix with a bandaged man on it so yeah. i'm assuming yeah. it's supposed to be song hyun yeah. see word got around yeah because the yeah, second oh, he leaves yeah. it's like Beatlemania. yeah <laughs> the Beatles are back <laughs> yeah <laughs> where's your flute yeah, yeah. Dude, we heard <laughs> we want an encore <laughs> not the ending though no, no. Uh, But they all grab him and beg for prayer over their sick loved ones. But he fights his way to the car and is able to drive away. Back at his church, Priest Roe pours wine and comments that people are coming to seek prayer from the bandaged saint. Still covered in his white bandages, Song Hyun admits that he doesn't know how that all started, but he did hear about people being cured. Priest Roe dismisses this as being psychological because Song Hyun was the only one out of 50 volunteers that survived. Do you sense any kind of jealousy? Yeah. He uh he does seem salty. Yeah. Um I don't know if it was the pouring of the wine that added to the It was like some Cersei <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah calm down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and one out of fifty, the stats aren't even that yeah. great. <laughs> so we cut to Song Hyun throwing a party for sick children at the hospital. He performs a magic trick for them and they applaud. He's no longer bandaged except for a small one on his cheek, but he begins card tricks and everyone is so enthralled that they don't notice a woman run all the way across <laughs> yeah. the yard over to the window. She starts to bang on it and try to open it. It's like, God damn. Yeah. 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 She's Mrs. Ra played by Kim Hae Suk. They open the window and she asks if Song Hyun is the miracle survivor out of 500. 
Oh, yeah. So it's starting to. Yeah. 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 And also, I'm not, I'm in the middle of a performance, but go yeah, off. No, this is incredibly <laughs> rude. Jesus. Dude, I am working. <laughs> <laughs> she cries as she tells him that her son has cancer and begs him to pray for him. Song Hyun admits that there's nothing he can really do. This is all a psychological effect. I appreciate him being like, look, yeah. mm-hmm. y'all just think I'm magic. I'm not magic. He's not trying to, you know, bunk yeah. some burner. Uh, which. <laughs> nice little learner yeah but he could you know mm-hmm. yeah give me 50 bucks i'll heal him yeah. you know yeah. or i'll pray over him but in the next scene he follows mrs Ra into a hospital room in the bed is her son kong Wu, played by shin hei kian who is about song hyun's age right i mm-hmm. was expecting a child i don't know if it was because he was no, uh yeah. performing for children <laughs> uh-huh well i mean the way that she ran up it seemed she's like yeah. my baby yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my baby boy is sick <laughs> I do think that she kind of, in a way, and we'll learn later. Misled. Mm. Well, partially misled, but partially really infantilizes this this man. Absolutely. And allows for that to kind of be the way he's treated by everyone. But Kong Wu is complaining about the TV reception when they come in, while another woman, Taeju, played by Kim Ok Bin, tries to feed him. He immediately recognizes Song Hyun from having lived in Busan. I was like, Busan! Yeah. <laughs> I was the Leonardo DiCaprio. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Snap. You sound, you're like somebody in the crowd where they name your hometown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But Song Hyun prays over Kong Wu, but Taeju does not seem to care. She pulls feathers from her coat and even scoffs when the priest refers to Kong Wu as kind hearted. Yeah. yeah. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's when she's just tearing the shit from yeah. her jacket. Yeah. She couldn't give a fuck. No, she does not care. That is one thing that I did want to talk about was Kim Ok Bin. Mm-hmm. She had like kind of built little roles here and there. Mm-hmm. But this is like her first big role that she got to like really come at it right. and really perform. And I read that when Park Chan Wook realized he had written such a well rounded character mm-hmm. that goes through a lot of changes, right. yes. he said he knew he needed a really versatile actress. Right. And so he meets with her. And he said that within five minutes, she showed him a range of emotion that he knew she was perfect for the Jesus. part. Oh, nice. I believe it, though, because she's fucking oh, amazing. Yeah. It's honestly nuts how well she takes to each thing. Yeah. Mm. Whew. We'll get there. <laughs> Just as Song Hyun finishes his prayer, Kong Wu's like, I don't believe any of this, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll allow it since we're old friends. Yeah. I'm like, dude, shut yeah. the hell it's up. Like, if, we, if I didn't know you, no, I'd be- yeah. <laughs> Kicking your ass right now. Spit in your face already. <laughs> but Mrs. Ra finally recognizes Song Hyun. He used to live at the church orphanage and come over for noodles when they were in fifth grade. He and Kong Wu. She commends her son <laughs> for never being able to pass up a stray cat and for being so good to the orphans. Yeah, hmm. I <laughs> was just like, oh, I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> I understand the cats in the cradle and whatnot, but <laughs> <laughs> you don't often like that's really insulting. Yeah. No, he's not yeah, a fucking yeah. stray cat. No. Like, and we is... love stray cats in this yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a lot. But that's very rude. Yeah. <laughs> but Taeju wandered away to the TV as soon as the prayer was over, and Song Hyun looks over at her, addressing her as Kong Wu's sister. He says that she always had calluses on her feet, and Kong Wu would make Song Hyun touch them. Everyone looks incredibly uncomfortable, and Mrs. Ra explains the situation to Song Hyun in a whisper. Taeju's parents rented a room from them. Her father was a high school dropout because that's relevant. One day, they left her with Mrs. Ra and said they'd come back, but they never did. She says Taeju was three, and she raised her like a daughter and a puppy. We didn't need to know that about no. her dad. No, we that was yeah, really you, unnecessary. You didn't need to say that. But I mean, that awkward moment of when we were kids, she was your sister and now yeah. she's your wife. That awkward yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've well, all. We've yeah, all been yeah, there. It's weird. <laughs> I just, I think that, first of all, I don't know why she keeps equating people with animals to, like that. To dogs and cats. Yeah. Did they feed her from a bowl? Like, uh, what are you talking about? They probably fucking did. But I just, I mean, this says so much about Mrs. Ra as well. Mm-hmm. Cause she's kind of like that gossipy, you know. Yeah. Yes. Uh, she's like, oh, by the way, he didn't even fucking finish high school. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it's but like, you like, don't okay, need to say yeah, that. Yeah, that was completely unnecessary. Yeah. And then make the parents all, I'm gonna go get some cigarettes, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't need to tell her story that way. She's right no, there. Yeah. Also, no, she shit. Yeah. if she wanted it told, she could tell it. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Mrs. Ra is on some bullshit. Yeah. She is. <laughs> I will admit that she is like I'm not. She's not my Funny. favorite. Yeah, but she's one of my favorites in this movie because <laughs> she just says shit, man. Oh, she yeah. doesn't care. But we hear her continuing to talk as we see Song Hyun finishing up mass and going to the family's clothing shop, Happy Hanbok. But their apartment or their home is above the mm-hmm. shop. I do want to say that shot of him finishing up mass. Mm-hmm. When we see the shots of the church, right, looks very drab again. Yes, mm-hmm. but the second we get a shot of him holding the wine, the red it's pops bright, yeah. bright, bright, yeah, so vibrant. And I read in the New York Times that Park Chan Wook had initially wanted to make this film black and white. Huh? He said that his idea to make it more palatable for audiences, he goes, because there's going to be a lot of blood in this film. Uh-huh. He's like, maybe I should make it, it black and white. Yeah. And then whenever he decided not to, he's like, well. Let's just go for it. And with all the blood that he did, he spoke to the production designer and he said, I want to make the blood appear Mm -hmm. wine-like to kind of fit that metaphor. Right. And when you look, most of the blood is very... Yeah. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. Yeah. And the like viscosity of it. Yeah. 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 I can definitely see that. But in the kitchen... Mrs. Ra tells him that Teju used to call her mommy, but she's her mommy in law now. She laughs as she says that the marriage was no big deal. Teju just went from sleeping in her bed to Kong Wu's bed. I don't like this. Yeah. I'm like, you're really trying to normalize something. Yeah. That's not really She's normal. Like, it's, guys, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you trying Everyone to convince? Everyone does this. <laughs> After Teju nonchalantly refers to someone as a cocksucker in front of the priest, Mrs. Ross silently gets up and goes to help her prepare sushi. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, All right. I was like, yeah, right in front of the priest. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so I learned that in South Korea, a dish very similar to sushi, it's called kimbap. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is kimbap. They literally said that. It's, I guess, the way that the rice is prepared. I think in Japan, they use rice vinegar. Mm-hmm. And then I think in South Korea, they use something else. Well, I've never had kimbap, but I would mm. love to because this oh, shit yeah. looks good. It looks really good. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was upset with what happens next. I'm like, no, yeah. eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so Mrs. Ra offers a piece to Song Hyun, but when he goes to take it from her, she tries to put it in his mouth instead of putting it in his hand, and he immediately falls on all fours gagging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He says he's incredibly sensitive to smell and he got a whiff of blood. Mrs. Ra's like, whatever. And she eats the stuff and bought them and we love. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> waste not one night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Teju runs into the bathroom and grabs a pad out of the medicine cabinet, though. Damn, so, he's good. Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Just then, Kong Wu comes home with friends and co-workers from the dam where he works. There's the manager, Young Du, played by Oh Dal Su, and his wife, Evelyn, played by Mercedes Cabral, and an ex-police chief slash head of security at the dam, Sung Dae, played by Chang Song Young. The whole time Kong Wu was making introductions, he's doing a lot <laughs> of mouth breathing and sniffling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They all gather around the table for Mahjong, except for Teju and Evelyn, who sit on the side, of course, and serve drinks, Mm -hmm. even though Song Hyun said that he doesn't even know how to play. Mm -hmm. As they play, though, Mrs. Ra talks about Song Hyun praying over Kong Wu. She says that she felt something hot come down on her head and tingle all over like she was being poked with needles. She says then Kong Wu told her he felt hot on his stomach and then his cancer just vanished. Why did we not lead with that? Yeah. They're just like, uh, so anyway, like after they can bop and have drinks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was so confused. Like, how long has he been here? I don't I don't know. I wonder if he had cancer. Yeah. Because oh. the way that she's like so, I mean, and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see a greater example of this later. But I feel like she's, he's super sickly. Like he's just fucking, it's like snotty and right, sickly. Right. Yeah, he might. I mean, he might just be going through some shit yeah. yeah or in all fairness it could just be allergies yeah but yeah. she's like and oh she's, my son yeah, yeah. Uh, she's very like this is the vibe i get from her you yeah. know what i mean i need to get that miracle priest to come and pray because my son doesn't feel good he has like, a tummy ache yeah <laughs> literally song hyun is even surprised to hear this when they talk about getting an endoscope to double check song day is like women shouldn't get sedated to do endoscopes because the doctors rape them and when he's saying this he looks over at teju it's awkward as fuck 
I was like, I don't like you. I'm no. like, I don't fucking like any of these people. Uh, isn't it your turn to play a Q? Right. Yeah. <laughs> a Q. <laughs> I've never played Mahjong in my life. I'm sorry. I think they're tiles. Oh, I okay. could be wrong. <laughs> they don't call them Qs. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, they do now. Oh, okay. Cool. But Sung Day wins the game and Song Hyung goes to turn off the heat. But even wrapped in coats and scarves, Kong Woo complains that he's still cold. Mrs. Ra yells at Teju that Kong Woo is cold and she immediately gets up to make him a hot water bottle. She turns around like that Kirsten Dunst meme. He said he's cold. (laughs) (laughs) And she just snaps to work. It's so sad. It's horrible. She gets up to make it and she's hot and sweaty. Yeah. And fanning herself with her shirt. And Song Hyun is like, hmm. Like he's just looking at her. Mm Mm-hmm. After setting the water to boil, she walks past the table and Kong Wu grabs her. He pulls her onto his lap and says that she can heat him up instead of a hot water bottle, but she tries to pull away and falls onto the floor. It is like super awkward and embarrassing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Made even worse by Mrs. Ra, who just points. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Everyone stares down at her and Mrs. Ra fucking cackles. Mm-hmm. Like. I it's, thought he pushed her down. I was like, man, you slapped shit out of that dude. See, I was wondering. He it kind, seemed kind of yeah, needs to be or slapped. Or like it. he just let her go to fall. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Like, yeah. He I mean, could have had her. Yeah. I mean, uh, literally on his lap. He sucks. <laughs> so does his mom. Yeah. <laughs> Song Hyun offers her a hand, but she rejects it and gets up herself. She raises a hand to slap her husband, but pauses and gets a tissue to wipe his snotty nose instead. He can wipe his yeah, own. That's gross. Yeah. Like, yeah, come no, on, man. He's so fucking yeah. gross. <laughs> it's nasty. Like, he's so, like, you know those kids that it's like, wipe your nose, yeah. wipe your nose. Like he's, But you're he's a grown adult. Yeah. You can't feel that? Yeah. Like, Jesus so Christ. Gross. I can feel it looking at you. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I um did notice, again, like you had said, he was kind of eyeing her a little too closely. He was. But then when she fell down, he also stole a peek of her panties as well yeah. he did and i'm like this is but father he was, yeah. <laughs> but he was the only one that offered to help her as well yeah but he was that was for the Everybody atonement else like, yeah, ah, like, sorry months. i looked at your panties back there <laughs> <laughs> let me help you let me help you he was helping himself no, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> but teju says she's going downstairs to the clothing shop to turn off the lights after she turns out the store lights, she steps out into the street with her bare feet and takes off running. We hear her panting and kind of moaning as we see Song Hyun sitting naked in his room. He beats his thighs with his flute until he starts to bruise. Don't do that, dude. No. I, is this yeah. like one of those like, I'm horny, but I can't do anything about right. it. So I'm going to hurt myself until I'm not anymore. Well, yeah. I, yeah. And I think I'm going to be flat honest uh, while she's doing wind, wind sprints, like get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, because of the way the camera was, yeah. I that thought he was, he was hitting off? himself. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy jerking no. off. No, no. <laughs> That's what I thought no. he was doing. Weird way to do that. Yeah, well, well, he's well, naked well, and you I, just see him from the he, back. He's, before yeah, before I saw the flute oh, in the beating. I thought that I he, thought he was beating something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was hitting himself in the wiener is what I he's thought. Oh. Break both flutes. Yeah. He's like, don't do that. <laughs> Please stop. I, I understand it's a woodwind. Yeah. <laughs> But that's what I thought was going on. And then the, you see his thigh. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, that's that's better I'm than rough, him man. just beating the, the shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so don't I, do that i no, guess i tipped my hand i was the only one that thought he was <laughs> <laughs> like what <laughs> it's like no I, I don't i don't uh me neither <laughs> of course not no one did yeah nobody thought that fucking disgusting anyway but i <laughs> do want to say that it's kind of almost like they're both torturing themselves in their own way yeah yeah because they're having probably both the same impure thought probably right. him reaching out a hand is probably the nicest anyone's been to her oh, yeah. True. in her whole life. She compared her to a dog. Well, and they're both kind yeah. of like stuck in this place that they don't want to be. I think that Song Hyun wanted to die. Yes. Yeah. So I don't, and now he's become a fucking like symbol for healing. And, you know, yeah. I don't think <laughs> this is any of this is what he wanted. Probably. So not. he's not where he wants to yeah. be. She clearly is not where she wants to be. Definitely not. So yeah, it's like, yeah, I agree. But later, Teju looks miserable as Kong Wu lays on their waterbed, kind of thrusting mm-hmm. and talking about how much he loves their Mahjong gang. In his room, Song Hyun washes his flute clean, but when he sniffs it to inspect it, he starts gagging. 
We see images of their sounds horribly amplified. People laughing, vegetables being chopped, people praying, a cat loudly meowing. My favorite. Le- <laughs> leaves rustling in the wind, someone drinking wine, someone masturbating, a toilet flushing. He looks at his own arm and we zoom way in to see a microscopic bug. These images all flash together and Song Hyun passes out. Two things here. The first is the guy that's having fun. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a happier person in my entire life. No, he was (laughs) he was thrilled. He was. (laughs) (laughs) But the idea that your senses could be so magnified, right? That the skin and dust mites are too much. Yeah, that is kind of the worst thing I've ever seen. That's horrifying. Yeah, I was I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, Yeah. like that sucks. That would suck. He had no choice but to pass out. (laughs) Yeah. In their bedroom, Kong Wu sleeps. Teju, though, sits over him with a pair of spring scissors. She brings the spring scissors up and slowly brings them down into Kong Wu's open mouth without making contact. She does this again and again, simulating stabbing him Mm. in his mouth. That was very uncomfortable. Well, I was waiting to see. No, yeah, Yeah. it it looked like she was going to do it. Yeah, I was like, you going to do that? Yeah. (laughs) I, I, I was expecting some teeth stuff. Uh, ah. Yeah, no, for a second I was like, oh, please don't hit him please, in the teeth. No. Just get him in the neck or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that, I can Flush. handle that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not teeth. <laughs> the next morning, the sun rises and Song Hyun is still passed out on the floor naked. The light from the sun causes his back to sizzle and this wakes him up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, something smells delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're making bacon no, downstairs? I was gonna say, he was making bacon. <laughs> Mrs. Ra and Teju work at Happy Hambuck, and then we see the sun going down. Now that it's night, Song Hyun ventures out of his bathroom, stretching only his arm into his bedroom, and we see that the arm and his hand are both completely covered in blisters. Mm hmm. We cut to him visiting a patient at the hospital, but he's now completely bandaged again, like no skin showing. Yeah. The patient was in a horrible accident and doesn't have much time left. Sang Hyun attempts to take her last confession, but when she's unable to speak, he lowers his ear to her lips. He's distracted by the bloody towels, her bloodstained clothes, and the blood that is still pumping from her neck with each heartbeat. He reads her last rites, still distracted. He anoints her, getting blood on his hand in the process. When he bows his head to pray, we swirl around him and see him lick her blood from his thumb. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing was, is I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. I just didn't expect him to do it in front of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and maybe that's why she compared him to a cat. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how he drinks his, in- <laughs> his whole life. Later, he visits Hyo Sung from the beginning, who's still in a coma. We see blood traveling away from his body through a tube. We follow the tube down and see that Sang Hyun, still bandaged, is lying on the floor with the other end of the tube in his mouth. He drinks Hyo Sung's blood greedily. This this imagery here is was just wow. Yeah, come on, man. No. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be illegal, yeah. right? <laughs> I, for some reason, I loved the way it collects into the tubing. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just drinks it. And it's very interesting to me. We're calling upon like two universal monsters because he's wrapped like the mummy. Yeah, right. that's true. And he's over here drinking like, yeah. like Dracula. Drink- <laughs> <laughs> drinking like Frankenstein, right? Yeah. <laughs> the I, Invisible Man. No, he's wrapped like the Invisible the Man, invisible not the man. mummy. <laughs> yeah, because the mummy was not <laughs> all wrapped up. That's just our cartoon imaginations of toilet paper and stuff. Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is it weird that this was more bothering than him just biting him on the neck or stabbing him and drinking his blood or something? No, because it's I, it, it's not weird because it's almost like he's trying to address it in still a human way. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It is disturbing. Yeah, it's like, the visual on, man, is incredibly disturbing. Leave him he's alone. trying to yeah. heal. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? He needs it. He's yeah. dreaming about sponge cake. Find yeah. a fresh catch, man. What are yeah, you doing? See, and I think that's what gets me is like he's been in and around this hospital a right. lot. You don't know where the blood like fucking room is. Yeah, yeah, but maybe he's scared of getting caught. This is straight straight. Wait, from the so cup. but he's not <laughs> scared. Yeah, he's laying on the <laughs> well, fucking floor with yeah. a straw, a silly straw in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it's seriously, <laughs> drinking <laughs> from the tap like Barney Gumble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he says later, knob, he, yeah. he says <laughs> later that if his alarms don't go off, nobody even goes in there because he's in a coma. That's how he found out. Well, Bro, right. I'm he's sorry. like, trust me, no one comes in. <laughs> well, when he has no blood in his body anymore, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine somebody's gonna notice. Yeah, <laughs> listen, 
It's warm. The blood in the fridge is cold. Yeah, well, hold it between your or put it in your bosom. There you go. Sponge cake. I've heard that one. Yeah, that works. (laughs) But he finally stops himself and hooks the IV back up properly. He checks to make sure that Hyo Sung is still breathing. He goes over to the mirror and unbandages his face. He watches as all the blisters on his face completely disappear. Without another thought, Sang Hyun opens the window and flings himself out of it, landing on the car below. His head crashes through the windshield, but we watch from above as he's still able to flip himself over. That looked just, I don't know, it really messed with me for some reason. What messed with me is the fact that he was like absolutely not like mm-hmm. as soon as yeah. he saw what was happening he's like fuck this i'm i'm out like, and everything that he said in the beginning yeah, yeah. he's willing to he doesn't he, yeah, yeah, yeah i'm yeah. done yeah i i was just <gasps> like i was not <laughs> expecting that how much would that suck you're like fuck i just hurt my head now i gotta get out yeah. of the car yeah and then now you're now well, you have a yeah. head-shaped hole in the car yeah. that nobody can explain <laughs> <laughs> that poor fucking owner yeah that sucks and motorist I do <laughs> left the note like sorry, sorry, <laughs> yes, sorry about the car. I did like the uh, kind of convergence of practical effects, right? Yeah. CG and digital effects. The way that the blisters disappear, yeah. Oh yeah, like everything just melds so well in this yeah, film. Yeah, just excellent. But in Kong Wu and Teju's bedroom, he sleeps, but she tosses and turns. Finally, she gets up and runs down the street with bare feet, still wearing her nightgown. Her calloused feet slow down and come to a stop when she sees Song Hyun standing at the end of the street. Aside from his broken glasses, Song Hyun looks completely fine, even yeah. though we just saw him, I mean, effectively kill himself, yeah. but not die. Teju covers herself and tries to run in the opposite direction. We watch her feet as she begins to run, and Song Hyun comes behind her and lifts her up. He steps out of his shoes and sets her back down into them. He looks down at her and can see the blood pulsing through her veins as her heart beats. She turns around and they stare at each other for a moment before he just walks away and she looks down at his shoes on her feet. The blocking of this section is beautiful. Yeah. The way that she's lifted and just placed. Oh, yeah. And you know, I mean, she's never had treatment like this in her entire life. No. And so it means so much. Well, he literally gave her the shoes off his feet. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, I don't know. And the pain that she's gone through with the calluses on her feet, probably. I just think this whole section is gorgeous. It's Mm -hmm. beautiful. You're like, I'm rooting for these kids. Yeah. The next morning, though, Mrs. Ra tends to Kong Wu in the kitchen as Teju tells them that she was all the way by the pharmacy when she woke up this morning and a man was walking past her. Mrs. Ra only seems annoyed by this, saying there's pills for sleepwalking and maybe she should start locking Teju in her room at night. I was like, what the fuck? Instead yeah. of being worried that she could have hurt herself or somebody could have done something to her, she's just mm-hmm. like, bitch, again? Like, she yeah. just seems so annoyed. Like, put her in a cage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, good Lord. Still bundled up, Kong Wu just tells her that she should have brought him some medicine for his cold since she was over by the pharmacy. Do you know how weird it would be to wake up somewhere? Yeah. You wouldn't be like, oh shit, Kong Wu might need and what, yeah. <laughs> Well, and what money does she have? She's That's fucking true. sleepwalking. Yeah. <laughs> he remarks that she never gets sick and then tells his mother that Teju is a Yeti. Suddenly... He bends over and farts and Mrs. Ross smells the fart and is like, this smells like you did when you had gastritis. And she runs yeah. away to go get him pills. OK, I have a lot of problems this with this. This is the most <laughs> disgusting fucking thing. First of all, this, this is, is what makes me think that she could have been lying. Uh-huh. Right. Gastritis. He could have just farted. Like, yeah. that's not even. <laughs> so gross. That's number one. Number two is that she has like a bank of knowledge based on yeah. farts. This is she could make money doing this. <laughs> I mean, I think it only works for Kong Wu though. Okay, yeah. it's like watch me smell my son's farts. <laughs> Won't make as much money that now, way. Yeah. I don't think people would pay for that. It's like oh, when you said step right up, I thought you were gonna smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I'm gonna go get a funnel cake. <laughs> That night at the church, Song Hyun asked Priest Ro, is this necessary for him to believe him? The camera pans out and we see that Song Hyun is kneeling on the floor and Priest Ro is literally grabbing his heart with his hand inside of Song Hyun's chest. It looks amazing. Yeah. It does. Priest Ro removes his bloody hand from his chest and it, it the chest heals itself immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Song Hyun tells him that when he drank Hyo Sung's blood, the blisters disappeared, like the vampire cells suppressed the EV. 
The only problem is that it doesn't last long. He tells Priest Roe that he didn't choose the blood that was transfused into him. He went there to do good, and now he's thirsty for all sinful pleasures. So, well, first of all, that's foreshadowing. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Second of all, that was the major question I had because I thought it was going to get answered. Yeah. Is whose blood was that? It doesn't. It, it was just a vampire trying to do his duty. Yeah, I think that's, that's, he's donating blood. That was my thing, too. So you just had this vampire blood on hand? That was, yeah. And I was like, where did this come from? What the fuck? A vampire. Well, uh, we know that part. Duh, but, well. but the idea of, uh, first of all, like, what type? Because well, it had an A on there. It should, yeah, have been a, that? should have been a V. <laughs> but... I mean, when you're donating blood, I would imagine you do it during the daytime. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, did did the vampire volunteer for this in the past? Yeah. And then they figured this out, or they were like, "Hey, you know what's going on? What? Mm -hmm. Where did where did it? How'd you get it?" And I know the, it's a lab. Could it have been? Well, we ran out of blood. Well, we, we got, got this old vampire. Yeah, blood we got confused. Lying around. Yeah, the vampire. The they went in the <laughs> they went in the wrong fridge. Like, well, we got that bag of vampire yeah. blood. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's see what happens. All right, we got this uh, straight in from trans. Pennsylvania. They yeah. try I'm sure it'll work. Yeah. It was next to the Event Horizon yeah. cut. <laughs> Damn it! But yeah, I was. That was the only question that I had that didn't get answered in this film. Because I, I, and not that I expect like a big ass fucking vampire no, battle at the end. But <laughs> well, I mean, well, <laughs> but you know what I mean, where he like goes to a castle yeah. or something. But I would have liked Anything. to know. Yeah, you know, because that's a big deal. It is. Well, you know, whatever. All right. Well, shouldn't he be trying to blow the lid off that place? Yeah. Like, they have vampire. But, like my <laughs> life will never be the same. Do again. an expose. Yeah. Tell his fucking minions that are waiting outside. Yeah. Well, like head to the Emanuel lab. <laughs> I don't care. All right. That's fair. <laughs> Point. <laughs> we both, we've all got opinions. Yeah. <laughs> I do not care. All right. Song Hyun asks how he can get human blood without killing someone. And Priest Ro says that God told them not to worry about what they eat for he will feed even the birds in the sky. <laughs> Song Hyun is like, what about the bats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he takes out his knife and slices his wrist, offering it to Song Hyun. He drops to his knees and drinks from the priest's wrist. That's that's what I want. Uh -huh. No, he didn't skip a beat. He just cut his arm. Here you go, fam. And Take he, a drink. Like, he, yeah, like that. Yeah. He tucked in, too. Yeah. Well, he was hungry. Well, he just ate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just said it doesn't last long. I don't like that. And well, he probably didn't take too much from Hyo Sung because he didn't like want to kill him. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> like he's got to eat three times a day. Does not last well, yeah. long? Yeah. Like, That's a good question. And three people a day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much is the serving? Yeah. <laughs> It's funny you said the bat thing because I can't remember where I read it, but they said that this film was supposed to be called Bat, mm -hmm. which I mean is very interesting to yeah. me. Thirst is better, yeah, because yeah. it, it implies like more than parched, right? Right. Uh -huh. Well, more ways of parched. Yeah, yeah. Does we've, that make sense? <laughs> we've said this is a horny film. Yeah. <laughs> We cut to Song Hyun winning his first game of Mahjong to the astonishment of everyone. They all laugh at Sung Day, who had bet 30 bucks that he would win. He angrily hands over the money, and Mrs. Rob reminds him that Song Hyun was the only survivor out of 500 volunteers. <laughs> It's like, how does that pertain? Yeah, <laughs> it's like Job. Um, when he's like, "This is an eighty thousand dollars suit," it's like you're just, you, keep, you keep adding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Teju stares at him until he looks over at her, and she goes back to pouring the drinks. Mrs. Ra also kind of seemed to notice that, but mm -hmm. she doesn't say anything. And see, so now it's being returned. Yeah. yeah. That night, Teju turns off the lights to the store downstairs and takes off her shoes. We see her feet start to step outside, but stop when Song Hyun walks in. She tells him that she didn't see him go outside, but he doesn't say anything. She takes him by the hand and leads him into the shop where she hands him a box that was hidden behind fabric. He opens the box and his shoes that he gave her are inside. Yeah. And oh, she I thought it was a new pair of shoes. I thought it, she was returning his shoes, but she can't be like, oh, remember last night we ran into each other? Here's your shoes. Oh, like yeah, she has true. to be yeah. sneaky about it. Yeah, because she did straight up say, yeah. amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she like cleaned them up because they look spruced. <laughs> well, she probably did. But while he's looking at them, she looks at the blisters on his face. There's just a couple. It's not like he was oh, earlier. Yeah. He warns her that it's an infectious disease and asks if she's scared, but she only comments on how different he looks without his glasses. She asks how you get infected, and he tells her definitely not from a kiss because he's never kissed anyone in his life. 
Until now. I was like, oh, <laughs> motherfucker, smooth. That vampire blood's <laughs> making me. <laughs> They kiss and she leads him further back into the shop. She tells him that she didn't run out because she's shy. Back in Busan, she ran because she was sick of everything. They continue to kiss and undress as she details it. The mother and her idiot son, the damn house, the sad old music. She says she waited for him, the orphanage boy, to come when she was younger because Kong Wu liked him. And when he was over at the house, Kong Wu would leave her alone. She repeats that she isn't shy before exposing her breasts to him and telling him that she runs out barefoot to escape this hell faster. I think he kind of makes her shy in the moment, yeah. though. Yeah. Because the second that she does that, he looks away and she covers her boobs. Well, because he he doesn't... Come on, man. He's a fucking priest. Yeah, he yeah have, but he's well, kind of being thrown into the deep end. Yeah, yeah, but he's kind of a contradiction in the moment because he is a priest and he's got all these beliefs and like boundaries and everything. But then he's like, I've never kissed a girl. He yeah. said till tonight. <laughs> he said kiss, not tits. Well, like yeah. this is ramped up probably faster than he was expecting it. He's to. like, Whoa, I thought we were just <laughs> <laughs> thought we were just naked. Yeah. Now we're naked. <laughs> <laughs> But she says she runs out in her sleep, too, and they think she's sleepwalking, but that's the only time she feels awake. I thought that was mm-hmm. very powerful. There's some good writing in this film. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, with the way that she described her life, can you blame her? Yeah. No. She unbuttons his pants, but he reflexively grabs a yardstick and starts to hit the inside of his thighs. <laughs> She stops him and sees the bruises that are already there, but she kisses the bruises and takes off his underwear. (laughs) He's like, (laughs) he's like, not today. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, he's not ready. He struggles to take his shit off. Yeah, he does. Well, because he's like, oh, yeah. But I mean, it's a little late to be like beating your leg, dude. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. Plus, man. she's right there. What if you hit her with the fucking That's ruler true. while you're doing this? <laughs> ruler? Well, or it, <laughs> whatever he fucking has. You're, you're absolutely spoiling the mood because she's like, what the? <laughs> yeah, no. She- <laughs> <laughs> like, she's trying to mac and he's just like, ah! and she's, and she's used to weird, but even that's yeah. like, what the yeah. fuck? But she gets on top of him, and just as they start showing each other the flesh, Kong Wu calls out for her to get a hot water bottle, and Mrs. Ra joins him very harshly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Teju gathers her clothes and leaves. Outside, we see Song Hyun silently leap up to the window of the bathroom where he was presumed to be. Right. Because she was like, I didn't even see you come outside. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, Don't worry about it. So what... What's a, a what's a bigger boner killer? Slapping yourself in the <laughs> leg with the ruler or dude dude's calling? Mom I yeah. <laughs> I, well, I laughed thinking about how she leaves to go to the dress shop. Yeah, and to is, turn off the lights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Song Hyun like I gotta go get the shit, and then he just runs to the bathroom immediately. Like they don't, they're so like oblivious. Right. Yeah, well, they don't care. They don't yeah. care. Yeah, I guess that's true. They don't really care what she does no. unless it's whatever they want. Yeah. Well, they've been down there for a while and they didn't even think to call her until he needed uh-huh. something because yeah. he doesn't feel good. And why? D- he's right next to the sink. Yeah. yeah. Get your own fucking hot water yeah, no, bottle. They're trash. They're yeah. trash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but a drunken Mrs. Ross slaps Teju, calling her a bitch and reminding her that she fed and clothed her and now she can't even change her husband's hot water bottle. What's again? What's the deal with all the the pillows and the bottles and the shit? Yeah, like what's he going through? I don't. Know. I think minor he's just sickly. discomfort. Yeah, yeah, he's sickly. <laughs> you got you have a fucking runny nose, dude. Yeah. Like, constantly. Teju and Evelyn lead Mrs. Ra to her room just as Song Hyun comes out of the bathroom, and everyone's like, "What took you so long?" <laughs> <laughs> With a smile, Teju takes Mrs. Ra's place at the mahjong table to her husband's surprise. She says it looks like fun and that it's exciting to touch the tiles. Yeah. The cubes, right? The cubes. Yeah. <laughs> Song Hyun chimes in that he could do it all night, too. <laughs> I was like, Dude? oh. <laughs> when Kong Wu says that she doesn't know how, Teju laughs and she's like, oh, yes, I do. And I'm good. <laughs> Song Hyun remarks that he can't wait until next Wednesday, prompting Kong Wu to ask, why don't they play Sunday yeah. too? It's like, Dude, <laughs> do you not realize what's going on? This part was so funny to me because right. they're not even attempting to 
really veil what they're talking. They're fucking looking at each right. other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they don't they don't know what just happened. I mean, yeah, they but don't pay her no mind. That's the no, thing. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the, the bottom line is if he would pay a fucking ounce of attention oh, to yeah. her, he'd be like, why are you looking at him? Why are you talking yeah. to him? But fucking Kong was like, why just win yeah. these days? Yeah. It's like, take my wife, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's terrible, but I love it. Yes. You know, yeah. It was great. It's a great scene. And again, like you're saying, with the comedy being injected into yes. it. Yeah. But Song Hyun says that it's Easter Sunday, so he'll be staying at the hospital. And Young Do says that it's best to leave things wanting. But Song Hyun and Teju stare at each other from across the table. The next day, as they work at the shop, Teju tells Mrs. Ra that she can't live this way anymore and she wants to help the needy. Maybe she could volunteer at a hospital on Sundays. I was like, oh. See, so for me, this is where the love story begins. Yes, right. and I'm rooting so hard. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing to me is that when she says she can't live like this anymore, yeah. Mrs. Raw looks up like, wait, what? Yeah. yeah. But then when she realizes, she's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You're still here? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, I don't got to get the ball? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. But at the hospital, they find an empty room. Sang Hyun lifts her onto a hospital bed and thanks her for coming, but he asks her not to come again. She tells him that she's come to help the needy, but he tells her this is a bigger sin to a priest. She says she's not Catholic, so to her, he's just a needy single man. So doesn't that even out? So nothing's really... Yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it means a hell of a lot to me. It means nothing to you, so <laughs> we're fine. He reminds her that they could both go to hell for this, but she rationalizes that since she doesn't have faith, she's not going to hell. <laughs> That's your problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. He rests his head in her lap and tells her that he has a terrible disease. She says that she is too healthy and would love to be sick in bed just once in her life. I was laughing because she's like, I would love to be sick in bed. And he's like, well, we're about to get sick in this yeah. bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean. It just felt like they're just, it was like um on that episode of The Simpsons where they have the bigger brothers. And he's like, in me, I have no right at all. <laughs> it's like everything's, I have too much faith. Yeah. Well, I don't have any. Well, I'm sick. I've never been sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And honestly, it's strange to me because when he, Kong Wu said earlier that she'd never been sick, I thought that was coming from an unobservant place. Yeah. No, she's like, I but don't she's like, sick. I actually am yeah. a yeah. superhero. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am David Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> he removes his collar and starts to bite her neck, but she hits him, making him stop. She hears snoring on the other side of the curtain behind them and pulls it back to reveal Hyo Sung, who is still in his coma. Yeah. Song Hyun is like, it's cool. No one will come here unless his vitals yeah. drop. But I'm like, how many ways can you disrespect this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're stealing his blood. You're yeah. trying to fuck. Him. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. This is a family show. You're trying to get it in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought so. Trying to get it in in the bed. Get yeah. it in. <laughs> Can't we just say make it sweet? Whatever happened. Yeah. Make it sweet. I don't um, know. I'm I thought like, we all agreed. Yeah. I'm just like, let this man rest and heal. It just made yeah, me laugh. because Up until now, we did not know that that was his room no and the other thing about it is the danger that at any point his vitals could drop oh yeah yeah which i mean might be what gets him you know whacking (laughs) the ruler or whatever (laughs) so i mean who knows but she sits back down on the bed and he kisses her feet despite the calluses on them this starts a very in-depth showing of the flesh scene during which he bites her again and she wonders if she's a pervert because she enjoys it no he b- <laughs> he bites her shoulder hard enough to draw blood and then he licks it up. This time Kong Wu and Mrs. Ra aren't there to interrupt them and they finish yep. in Hyo yeah. Sung's coma room. Afterwards, he wraps her in a blanket and they kiss and hold each other until it fades to black. I just have a couple points here. Mm-hmm. For the record, Park Chan Wook said that the sex scenes were storyboarded to a T. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> like every single movement, emotion, yeah, yeah. detail was planned out. So, and I think that's what was so funny to me because there were such awkward movements on behalf of Song Hyun. Yeah. Right. Like he, at one point, first of all, at one point he is very fixated on the little bit of blood in her neck. Yeah. 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 And then he starts rubbing her breasts with his face like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More cat-like behavior that... <laughs> <laughs> that maybe we were wrong about. Yeah. This is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she's not as bad as we thought. She's like, remember you used to think you were a cat? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I, my, um, the whole time this is going on, I'm like, I hope homeboy over there doesn't die soon or something yeah. because yeah. then they're going to get You're caught. Fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the funniest part to me is that when it cross dissolved, I thought the scene was over, but it was only halfway done. Yes. Oh no. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, they're wanting you to. Yeah. yeah. No. We're in. I. I. I'm in the relationship with them. Yeah. Like, Technically, we, this was a three way. <laughs> <laughs> so is she a vampire now or? No. See, I, I well I think that's not how it works. Being a vampire would be an improvement for her at right. this point in her life. But right. I, I think uh she's still I don't think it's sexually transmitted. Not I like think that. it's it's uh blood transmitted. You have to get a mysterious well, well, bag. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, say, well we you don't know. To, <laughs> you have to go to the Emanuel yeah. Labs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where they just have vampire yeah. blood. <laughs> They're the sole supplier for vampires. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Later, Teju steals eggs from a basket next to Hyo Sung, which God damn. <laughs> leave this yeah. fucking man alone. <laughs> <laughs> now the eggs were beautiful. They were, yeah. but th- they're not y'all's. Like leave yeah, them alone. That's kind of I was like, I get you probably hungry, mm-hmm. but don't take that dude's <laughs> eggs. Man. Working up an appetite. Yeah, but don't. I'm like, y'all have done enough. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Song Hyun. Like yeah. Leave yeah. Him alone. no shit. In all fairness, I feel like the eggs were decorative. Maybe. Know, I'm just trying it. to give them an out. <laughs> they, they still stole it, even if it is decorative. Look, I don't think stealing food is stealing. <laughs> we talked about this on Talk More. <laughs> <laughs> but she eats one and offers the other to Song Hyun, who declines. She asks if he eats, and he says yes, while glancing over at the curtain separating them from Hyo Sung. She asks if they can meet during the day next week, and he says that daytime is difficult, but she rationalizes that they would be able to spend more time together. He tells her that he doesn't want to keep his disease from her and crosses the room over to Hyo Sung's side. We don't follow him. We stay <laughs> yeah. zoomed in on Teju's face, who continues to eat her egg before gasping in horror. She tears out of the room and runs down the hall, and before the door closes behind her, we see Sang Hyun laying on the floor and drinking Hyo Sung's <laughs> blood from the IV tube. You couldn't wait, dude. He's like, let, right? me, yeah. He's like let me show you let me show you what it's all about. Don't do that. Or ease into it. <laughs> yeah. Like, good lord. It's, it's like, like so remember so when I bit your neck? <laughs> yeah. I like that for reasons more than having like, been so the silly straw makes it fun. <laughs> <laughs> We cut to Song Hyun hanging off a building by the tops of his feet, suspended upside down outside of a window. Like a bat. I was like, whoop, yeah. yeah. When the light clicks on, we see that he's at Teju's house. She's sitting on the toilet when suddenly Song Hyun throws his things inside through the window before jumping in himself. I'm like, can, can she pee? Like, <laughs> god damn. He just. How about give her surprise, a Surprise, bitch. Yeah. yeah. You really gave her something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> Teju tries to run, but he places a hand over her mouth. He tells her that he doesn't kill anyone and that Hyo Sung loved helping the hungry. <laughs> yeah. That that's what he took from the well, story. He, he's like, if you heard his story, <laughs> yeah. you'd know. I don't think that would yeah, suffice. <laughs> but he says that he would offer him his blood if he was able to, if only she'd heard the sponge cake story. I... <laughs> He lets go of her and says that no one gets blamed when they're hurt in an accident or if they have cancer. He reasserts that he went there to do good, but he's gripping the sink and a chunk of it snaps off in his anger. Teju reaches for the doorknob, but he grabs her hand and pulls it away. Now, I have to agree. He is going through it and none of it is his fault. No, it's right. not his fault. He literally the best of intentions. Yeah. And now this is what he's got to deal with. Yeah. He asks her, so what if he's a vampire? She didn't just like him because he's a priest. It's not, it's just a job. It's not yeah. who he is. <laughs> I love that he's referring to being a vampire as like a yeah. nine to five. Well, it's a full-time thing. It's a full-time job. <laughs> being a vampire is basically just having a different palette, he says. If two people love each other, does it really matter? As he's talking, we pan over and can clearly see his reflection in the mirror over the sink, which I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. Kind of subverts, you know, right. vampires don't have reflections but or whatever. That, yeah. I think that, too, again, is another question of where do you get this vampire blood from? Because you can see his fucking reflection. You're not supposed to have one, right? Is that Well, I feel like different movies have different rules or different. I, I, but every vampire movie doesn't have a reflection. Well. <laughs> this well, one does. <laughs> well, I did remember on True Blood, groundbreaking <laughs> HBO <laughs> series, they had said that a lot of the myths were started by vampires. Ah, okay. So they could to be like, look, I'm in scent. the mirror. How can yeah. I be a vampire? I don't know. Dracula was kind of mad when dude showed him his reflection. No, he, he was, was like, big mad. Yeah, he, <laughs> he slapped was... the shit. He's like, no. <laughs> he was pissed. He's like, come here. Yeah. <laughs> Get this ass whooping. 
but he tells her that she hates that he's a vampire but without being a vampire and only a priest he never could have had sex with her which he does he has a point Mm -hmm. she tries to go for the door again but he stops her he grabs her by the arm and asks her to come with him and let him take her away from this hell he lifts her up and starts to carry her over to the window, reminding her that she liked doing it with him and that Kong Wu was just no fun. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a kidnapping. No? Yeah, yeah, no. no yeah. <laughs> You've crossed the line. <laughs> yeah. Teju doesn't seem completely on board, though, and in their haste to leave, they knock the lid of the toilet tank onto the floor. It hits the ground loudly, and Mrs. Ra immediately calls out to Teju. Song Hyun sets her down on the ground and is like, well, later. <laughs> he climbs out the window himself. Teju just calls out to her mother-in-law that the toilet wasn't flushing properly. She looks out the window and sees Song Hyun running down the street. He stops to punch a street light, and when he runs away again, the entire light comes crashing down. That killed me. Yeah. He's like, damn it! But see, that's what I'm saying. He's like vampire vampire. He's strong. Mm-hmm. He's jumping yeah. from tall buildings. What? Reflection, I, man? No. <laughs> I did read an interview. Park Chan-wook had said that he wanted to take from some vampire lore, uh-huh. but he didn't want to take everything. All right. Because, like, uh, yeah. I mean, he's a priest still, and so yeah. he's probably got a cross on him, yeah. and it's not burning him. Yeah, and that's true. No, I feel yeah, like it would right. just add to complications yeah. that yeah. you can't even... Okay, and all right. also the budget that you have to find a way to... Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> The next day, Mrs. Ra and Teju sit in the shop without a single customer. At the end of the day, Mrs. Ra happily announces that it's closing time and just leaves. <laughs> like you're going to handle all that. Yeah, yeah, you can close up. <laughs> cool. At the hospital, Song Hyun gives Hyo Sung a sponge bath. Really the fucking least he yeah. can do. <laughs> he pauses to switch out bottles that he's draining Hyo Sung's <laughs> blood into. You better get every crack, <laughs> Every fucking crevice. <laughs> Why does he not just go to the blood bank? (laughs) I don't get it. When he swaps out a full one for an empty one, his phone rings. On the other end, Teju asks how someone becomes a vampire and if you can catch it through sex. When he doesn't answer, she gazes out the window and asks if he can turn her into one before starting to giggle. So she's had a full change of heart. Yeah. Yeah. She spent one more day with her mother-in-law. She (laughs) she had to work one more shift. That's it. Fuck this. That night, they meet on a rooftop where Song Hyun chugs a bottle of blood that he just got from Hyo Sung. <laughs> <laughs> there are fresh blisters on his face that immediately disappear once he finishes drinking. Teju stares at him in disbelief, saying that vampires are cuter than she thought. She gives him a coin, asking if he can bend it, and though he dismisses this at first, she insists and he rips the coin in half before tossing the pieces away. Teju runs to the ledge of the high rooftop and asks if he could jump from here. When he hesitates, she asks if it's just too high. In response, he takes her in his arms and jumps from the building. They land on another rooftop and then another until he safely brings her down to the ground. Throughout, Teju is laughing her ass Mm -hmm. off and having the time of her life. Yeah, she's changed her tune. Yes. Like completely. When they're on the ground, Song Hyun even looks up and seems a little amazed at what he's just yeah, done. Yeah, he's shook as fuck. He's yeah, like, he's really like, uh, jumped up <laughs> <laughs> didn't know I should yeah. be doing that. Teju hugs him and tells him that she's ready now. Instead of flying back onto the roof, they take the stairs. <laughs> he's like, let's not <laughs> like push A little it. too much, yeah. <laughs> I do want to say, because you can tell that the way these jumping shots are done, right. they're shot somewhat practically. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not just a bunch of CG yeah. no, models yeah. or anything. And I saw in that featurette that there is a lot of wire work in this film. Oh, yeah. And the way that they're able to just get rid of the harnesses and all that shit. Yeah, right. it's amazing. Because it yeah. looks really good. Yeah. And for it being, uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it looked incredible, uh, I, especially since it's 09. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it does look good. I won't, I won't lie. It does look good, but I, I just, for me, a little bit, uh, a little bit of it is just a little too slow. I would have liked it to be a little faster. There is one scene later that you can tell that it was probably not completely practical, yeah. but, uh, this one I enjoyed. Yeah. No. Yeah. This one right here. Yes. Later on though is when you're, it's a little slow for me. <laughs> But Song Hyun is still carrying her up the stairs. And when she winces in pain, he notices bruises and wounds on the inside of her thighs. Mm-hmm. He continues walking, but stops and asks if Kong Wu did that to her and if he hurts her often. She tells him that he doesn't do it often. Song Hyun asks if she wants him to rip up Kong Wu like he did that coin, but she just holds him closer. As they climb up the stairs, she tells him how they always treated her like a dog. She would have to clean Kong Wu, feed him, and even help him masturbate. She tells him that she's practically a virgin. 
We cut to her in her bedroom with Kong Wu, though, and he's applying ointment to her bruised legs and the wounds on them. He asked her to start volunteering somewhere else because mental hospitals are scary, but she just plays with his hair and smiles at him. So I do want to point out the importance of word choice. Yeah. Because he asked that question and she said not often. Yeah. Very important later. But that little cutaway to Kong Wu being so attentive. Uh Uh-huh really threw me for a loop i was like what the yeah. fuck and i was like hold on yeah you know and it kind of speaks to knowing people what they show yeah oh yeah you know versus in public versus exactly yeah. so it's very interesting right now yeah that i that was my note i was like hold on what's going on yeah, that he looks fucking surprised that- to see this totally but, threw me off but yeah. she's blaming him for this yeah and he's very caring yeah, yeah. so i was like what's hmm. what the fuck in priest rose room he presents his arm and a pocket knife to song hyun but he's not interested priest Ro is not wearing his glasses and his eyes look milky he proposes that song hyun go back to the lab and ask if there's a cure but song hyun says that he'll be hit by sunlight at some point on the way there Priest Ro muses that he wishes he could see the sun rise over the sea before he dies. Angry, Song Hyun tells him that vampires can't be in the sun, but Priest Ro doesn't care. He says even at night, that would be fine. He gets on his knees and begs Song Hyun to turn him. It would give him his sight back and cure his blindness because it even cured Song Hyun's EV. He begs him, but Song Hyun leaves. When Priest Ro crawls into the hallway after him, Song Hyun tells him that he is no longer a priest. He forsakes his priesthood, the rules, and the Vatican before telling him that he's leaving. You had to know that this was going to come sooner or later. That he was going to ask? That people were going to want to join the club. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? (laughs) Well, I mean... I get it. It sounds scary, but like if your friend is like, hey, look, dude, I'm not going to hurt you. This is what's going on, but I'm a fucking werewolf or vampire now. This, you you can't tell me like really in the back of your head. You're not like, man, should I ask him? <laughs> you know, do you think he'd be cool with that? I'd be like, but, let me see how this shakes out for him. <laughs> well, I mean, but seeing that he is good as long as he has blood, I mean... I mean, it's I get everything it. you and already know about vampires. A lot of mm-hmm. Priest Rose motivation is improving his sight. Right. Which we learned literally, he said he's been telling him his whole life to figure out how to yeah, fix his to, eyes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I get it. It's just incredibly fucking sad. It's oh, yeah. so sad. And for me, I mean, I don't know. I understand why he doesn't. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, man, he's been helping you not only yeah. since you were a baby, and but he ca- he's literally he's allowing secret. you to feed yeah. without having to kill anyone. See, that's what would make me feel bad. Yeah. I, I just feel like it could be like, look, you don't understand or something. Like he could talk to him instead of being like, no, fuck the yeah, back or, or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> on the mic drop yeah, and leave. Like, all, all he has to do is kind of explain like, look, that would positively happen yeah, yeah. but the negatives are something you're not yeah, even thinking yeah. about because i mean and tell him like yeah, yeah but it. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> fuck you <laughs> he turned tupac at the end of it <laughs> <laughs> first off because <laughs> he did jump out the window when he figured out what was happening yes. yeah. he was like oh no fuck this yeah so i mean maybe say that you mm-hmm. know what I mean? yeah like, i Look, tried dude, to kill I myself you. yeah, yeah i don't even want to be not this. yeah mm-hmm. it's a curse yeah yeah but, but instead, like, <laughs> he rips his collar yeah. in half. Fuck your bitch in the click you claim. <laughs> Is that the Vatican? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we cut to him sitting in the kitchen with Mrs. Ra, who is clearly drunk. She tells him that she doesn't know why he went astray, but he'll get through it. She says she took pity on him when he was young and she had him over for noodles. And now he can stay here for as long as he wants. So this is the first time in the film that I really noticed how different he's looking. Yeah. He look. I, okay. I obviously wrote the script for this. I went to watch it a second time. And when you see him at the beginning, I'm like, that is a different man. Yeah. yeah. Like he looks like a completely different yeah. person. I, I, it took me a second. Cause I was like, wait, because it's kind of like, gradual. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. like, no, nah, I'll just keep watching it. But by the end, I was like, hold the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, it, he looks like a completely different yeah. person. Well, his hair is all messy. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just, he's like wearing a leather jacket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a pack of cigarettes in his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> he's dancing in front of a bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's a transition. No, it's, it's in, yes. But we glide down the hall and see Teju listening in from her doorway as Kong Wu sleeps. Mrs. Rod drunkenly says that Teju really does have a good heart and she's leaving everything, including the shop, to her. 
which surprised me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We cut to Teju and Song Hyun lying naked on a mattress together. I just want to say that the second I knew that Song Hyun was going to be staying here, I'm like, they're going to get caught banging. Yeah. And then we literally banging. cut to a shot of their naked asses. Yeah. <laughs> Literal I was asses. Like, okay. yeah. I was like, he's just here now. Yeah. yeah he's, fuck it. <laughs> but they decide to show each other the flesh again, just as upstairs, Kong Wu rolls over and finds the rest of the bed empty. This was kind of sad to me. Still sniffling, he goes out into the street to look for his wife, going all the way down to the pharmacy, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is where she said, "Yeah." I was like, he cares. Yeah. And he listens. And he listened. And he was acting like a fucking asshole that morning. Yeah. But uh-huh. it's like... It's, <laughs> fucking farting and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut What disease up, is Ma. that, Ma? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot, man. <laughs> <laughs> The next morning, Mrs. Ra installs a lock on the outside of their bedroom door while Teju listens from downstairs in the shop. This seems extreme. Yeah. Well, because what if they have to take a piss or something in the middle of the night? No, it's a lot. Yeah. But Kong Wu, I guess, woke up and was like, she wasn't in bed. And Mrs. Ra was like, that's it. I don't like it. No, it's that, bullshit. No. It, it's a tiny lock, but it's a yeah. lock. <laughs> like, we can break it if we no, But still, yeah, th- there's no need for that. No. But I guess if you think about it, this is the first instance of a lie becoming like something that comes back to bite someone. Consequences of yeah. it, yeah. yeah. That night, with Song Hyun standing behind her, Mrs. Ra tells them goodnight before closing the door and locking the couple inside. Teju and Song Hyun stare at each other as the door closes. While Teju tries to open the door, Song Hyun drinks a bag of blood from the hospital See? and lays down in a cabinet that's laying on its back on the ground. You got his little Capri Sun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in her room, Teju has the spring scissors again, but instead of bringing them down over Kong Wu's open mouth, she stabs them into her own thigh, seemingly creating the wounds that we saw earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This hurt. Yeah. Uh, I was that like, was oh, hard. man. I was like, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> I, whenever I was watching it though, because he, he's like so in tune to everything now. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of became his little bat signal. to Yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when she cries out in muffled pain, Song Hyun hears it and comes in through their window. As he inspects her legs, Teju wakes up and begs him to get out before he's seen. Instead, Song Hyun sniffs out the blood on the spring scissors and grabs them, coming straight for Kong Wu, who has been asleep yeah. Yeah. the entire time. <laughs> Teju tries to stand in his way, but he grabs her by the throat, raises her up, and holds her out of the way. He stares at her, and they kind of look at yeah. each other, and then we cut to them and Kong Wu in a car. Kong Wu is laughing as he drives. Song Hyun inspects his face in the mirror and Teju looks very nervous in the backseat. They go out to fish on a boat and Kong Wu asks if Song Hyun remembers how cute Teju was when they were young. First, I was like, before like we got to the boat and they're there, I was like, mm-hmm. this is a dream. Yeah. yeah. Because it cuts so yes. yeah. abrupt. He says that when she was 12, she showed him her panties because she was afraid she had peed blood. He pinches her cheek and laughs at the fact that his mom had her sewing all day and night and is like, we stayed up crying together all night. Yeah, it's real funny. Yeah, that's yeah. Why would you tell that story? I don't, I don't understand. Know. <laughs> Nobody has any boundaries. Yeah. No, it's like thing. literally zero. <laughs> I, going back to the fart. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Can't, I can't stop. <laughs> Teju asks, planning on taking all night? Kong Wu is confused by this. He's like, it's only nine o'clock. <laughs> but the camera slides over to Song Hyun, who's sitting on the other side of Teju. She says that the hospital and the police questioning is going to take hours. And what if the sun comes up while it's going on? Song Hyun stands immediately, causing the boat to rock. He picks up a knife and Teju tells him no. How stupid is Kong Wu? Yeah. He's like, it's only nine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think my thing is they're literally planning your murder right in front yeah. of you. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll yeah. have to deal with the police. And he's just sitting there fishing. He's like, I hope it's a trout. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> I just don't understand this guy. He asks for just a little, but she reasons that they'll be able to tell with the autopsy. As the blisters grow more intense on his hands, Song Hyun says that it doesn't make sense to go somewhere else for blood when there's blood right here. <laughs> Again. Yeah. <laughs> She tells him to put the knife down, and Kong Wu was like, yeah, put the knife down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, dude, yeah. thank you. I was Finally. like, they're right there. <laughs> he does and grabs Kong Wu instead. After intense eye contact with Teju, he throws himself overboard, taking Kong Wu with him. 
Kong Wu still holds on to his fishing pole, though, and the hook gets stuck in Teju's ear, taking a piece with it when it finally breaks and it's, you know, pulled into the water with the pole. I was like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> and she takes it like a champ. That's like, just bad luck. Oh, though. it's horrible. It hurt to see. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I had a thought of what was going to happen with that ear in like five minutes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I also thought it was great that she didn't come out of this unscathed. Yeah. yeah. Because she is just a part of this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She stares out into the water, and when Kong Wu resurfaces, she kicks at him to keep him off the boat until he's pulled under again. Kong Wu does not come back up. When Song Hyun does, Teju is happy and tries to help him back onto the boat, but he immediately starts sucking at the wound on her ear. Of course. Yeah. She tries to fight him, finally pushing him back into the water where he stares at her with her blood on his lips. We cut to Teju unconscious being loaded into an ambulance, shrouded in a blanket. Sang Hyang watches as they drive away. Standing with him is Sung Dae, the security guy mm -hmm. who tells them just to keep quiet that they let him fish here and he'll take care of everything. <laughs> well, because when they first yeah. met, Kong Wu was like, he lets us fucking fish. Man. Yeah. Like, we're just, just supposed to be fishing. Telling everybody. Yeah. <laughs> When he leaves the dam, he comes across a group of people camping out. Whistle Girl, played by Wang Wu So Hai, whistles at the group to announce Sang Yun's presence. They're awed by him and the blisters on his face and immediately drop to their knees and repeat his morbid prayer. Silently, Sang Hyun flies away over the fence where he reaches stairs and runs away. I laughed so hard. Well, because he's like, yeah. I'm not fucking doing this. Like, he's not even trying to hide it. He's like, I'm not doing this shit tonight. And you're only increasing your legend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. not he's only like, did I he just heal. killed someone. I'm fucking tired. I'm hungry. It's too much. So <laughs> did he fly or did he just jump really slow over it? Well, it's like a vampire it's like glide. A, yeah, yeah, it's a glide. Well, that, it's a glide. How do bats fly? They glide. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Song Hyun meets with Priest Ro in the courtyard and tells him that there was a house at the bottom of the lake in a completely submerged village. He says that he thought Kong Wu was dead, but when Song Hyung would float up, so would he. So he put a rock on Kong Wu's chest and put him in the closet of that house. But what if he comes out and chases him? He laments that he should have put a rock on the closet door, too. He asks Priest Ro if death is the end, and he puts his finger in the priest's hand where his nail easily comes off. Priest Ro realizes what he's holding and throws it away in disgust. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you didn't need to do that. No. no. Come on. What do you think it was? A memory card? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's like, ugh. <laughs> Song Hyun says that vampires are not immortal and asks if the priest wants to see his dark world so badly that he still wants to take his blood. But Priest Ro nods, mm -hmm. but he's also pissed off. He says, how can Song Hyun live on other people's blood, but deny him only a drop of his own? I feel like that, I'm, I'm going back a little bit, but that mm -hmm. submerged village has to mean something. Yeah. yeah, It's too specific. I thought, again, I thought he was describing a dream. And then yeah. I was like, oh, he's fucking yeah. talking about Kong Wu. Like, this happened. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Song Hyun hangs his head, his face nearly consumed in blisters, and tells him that if Priest Ro will give him absolution, he will give him his blood in return. Priest Ro upholds his end of the bargain, but as he begins, Song Hyun begins to gag and cough up blood. Blood runs from his eyes and his ears as he crosses himself. He drops his head into Priest Ro's lap, and the priest gets blood from Song Hyun's ear on his hand. Just before he can bring it up to his lips, Song Hyun stops him. He takes the priest's pocket knife and effortlessly bends the corkscrew straight. He uses it to puncture the priest's chest until he stops moving and slumps back dead. Song Hyun throws aside the priest's robes and drinks greedily from the bleeding hole in his chest. I was not expecting this. No. Yeah. I literally was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I was like, oh, shit, he killed his buddy. Yeah, it, uh, it kind of upset me because there's really no need for him to do that. Yeah. I feel like he's dying. Like, you, he literally said vampires aren't immortal. Yeah. He's covered in blisters. He's fucking bleeding out from praying. I think he's like, I am I was never going to give him his, my blood in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, but chew on his wrist a little more. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, just, that's what you've been doing the whole time. Or what about dude in the hospital? Yeah, you got to. Yeah, you got. Uh, I mean. You got the hook up right there. Tap it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just got to wash him every now and then. Uh -huh. but, you know. Got a full keg anytime. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. And it was really sad because, again. 
he only wanted one thing. Right. Yeah. He just wanted his blindness cured because yeah. he's never been able to see. Yeah. Instead, we stab him in the heart. Yeah. yeah. So what is this that not even vampires can survive it? You know what I mean? Like what what is how bad is this shit? The that, EV? Yeah. yeah. I mean, as long as he stays fed, it's at bay. But yeah, when but he's that's not, only because it heals him. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. It gets so bad. It's horrible. It's like, I'm a, I don't care what you are. You're dying. Yeah. Well, and it's also a good representation for the audience instead of just like his stomach grumbling from yeah, time yeah. to time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, this shit's back. Look at yeah. his face. <laughs> At the hospital, in English, Evelyn asks Sanyan to pray over Teju because she's her only friend. His face is now completely clear, like mm-hmm. he got his fill. He speaks to Evelyn in English, but slips back into Korean as he prays. He kneels next to Teju's bed, and as Evelyn thinks he's praying for her, he flat out tells her that he told the cops Kong Wu was drunk, so she should tell the same story. <laughs> Him flat out saying yeah. this in Korean in front of her was genius to me. Uh-huh. I mean... But his tones are prayer. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. He tells her that when this is all over, they can be together, but they can't see each other for a while. She turns away from him and he tells her that his face may seem cold and rigid, but she needs to know that his heart beats only for her. Amen. I was, yeah, Yeah. I was like, (laughs) I'm still touched. Like, I'm still in this. I'm feeling a little weird about Teju, but Mm -hmm. I'm still, you know, we don't know the whole story. I got one foot in like hokey pokey, yeah. <laughs> but I am, I got my, when he said this, I felt it in my heart. I will say that. I was like, man, well, I believe his intentions Absolutely. are, right, right. but I'm a little, I got worries, but we see divers searching for Kong Wu's body as a disheveled Mrs. Ra watches them. We hear Song Hyun's voice tell Teju that when they're together, they can finally be happy. We cut to another house where a woman gives Song Hyun permission to drink her blood Mm-hmm. He does it lying on the ground the same way he did with Hyo Sung. I did notice though that when he's hooking up to drink or whatever, she has scars on her wrist, mm-hmm. which comes into play later. Right. Mm-hmm. I at first I thought this was some kind of vampire service. Yeah. Like Me too. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Underground. Like, well, I mean, he's you can't be out like with the it. Matrix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At home, Teju puts on a dress and heels and fixes her makeup in the mirror when she hears a sneeze behind her. She turns around to see Kong Wu thrusting on the waterbed, but with a giant rock on his chest. I was like, fuck! Yeah. Yeah. Man, the way that they use like visual, I don't want to say hallucinations, uh-huh. to convey guilt. Yeah. yeah. It's, it gets even better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But this is the start of something big. Yeah. <laughs> In the living room, Mrs. Ra and Kong Wu's friends sit next to his shrine. Mrs. Ra is already drunk and still slamming him back. Sung Day tells her that Kong Wu couldn't swim and she really just needs to move on. But Mrs. Ra says that Kong Wu could swim. Teju sits alone by the stairs and when she says this, she kind of perks up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think that he's kind of being an asshole though. He yeah. is. He's an asshole the entire yeah. time. Yeah. The first thing we hear from him is like, oh, doctors rape sedated women. It's yeah. like, what the? Like, dude, we're trying to have a party. Yeah, no, we're, she- we're playing Mahjong. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> But Sung Day asks if Song Hyun is still not taking any calls. And Young Do says that this must be a horrible shock to him, but he still could have come to Kong Wu's funeral. Just then, Song Hyun does come in. Mrs. Ra thinks, though, that he's Kong Wu and rushes over to him and throws her arms around him. Even after he corrects her, she holds his face in her hands and asks what took him so long and why he didn't call her. She then immediately starts cussing at him and hitting him until she falls out onto the floor. Yeah. It's, man, again, I swear, every major character in this film goes through a lot of changes. Yeah, yeah. I have, like, at the end, a statement on that like to talk about. We cut to Mrs. Ra in a hospital bed. The entire group stands over her holding hands. Sung Day cautions that this is why we all need to keep an eye on our blood pressure. He says that they need to send positivity to Mrs. Ra, starting with Teju. And he says Oasis style. Yeah. yeah. It's like, so they start singing Wonderwall. Yeah. <laughs> I said, maybe. Like, and, I know you're right about the diet tips, but this yeah. isn't the time. And <laughs> Mrs. Rogers sits up. It yeah. Works. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after all. I got to be honest, if that were to happen, I think my score would have gone down a little bit. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah. It's like, wow. So the Gallagher brothers fucking. Yeah, right. <laughs> they they got, knew what they're, the fuck. They're who should, we should be praying to. Mm hmm. 
But as Taeju begins to speak, we cut to her and Song Hyun back at the house together. They're sitting on the waterbed and start to make out. But before any showing of the flesh can commence, Song Hyun says that the bed is damp. He says something else. But yeah, he does. Yeah. He, he reacted like Ben Shapiro would. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wet. I don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> <laughs> but a, what he meant was everything's wet. The bed uh, is wet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he stops and tries to search for the source, but Teju gets annoyed and tells him that it's all psychological. They start up again with a lot of armpit licking. Uh, See, this is what I'm saying with the awkward shit. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't. And like, that was storyboarded. So, yeah. Okay. But Song Hyun stops asking if he was here too. Teju doesn't understand what he means by he. We cut to Song Hyun being trapped inside his cupboard, yeah. banging, trying to get out. But there's a large rock on top of the door. Teju wakes up horrified and she turns on her light and gets back in bed. But water starts to drop on her face. She screams and we see spring scissors slowly come down into her screaming mouth and raise up again. Standing over her, dripping with water and some snot, Ugh. is Kong Wu bringing the spring scissors down again and again. The snot runs from his nose and he laughs and laughs. When she finally retreats under the covers, he's there too. In Song Hyun's cupboard, water overflows from inside and we hear him stop struggling. In her room, Teju lays still on the bed. The bed is wet and when the door opens, we see that the door and the walls are all wet too. Mm-hmm. We cut to them showing each other the flesh, but we're closed way in on Song Hyun's face. Mm -hmm. He tells her not to let it fool her. It's all just an illusion. Closed in on Teju's face, she agrees that this is all psychological. But we pan back and see that Kong Wu is literally laying in between their bodies, smiling with water pouring out of his mouth. Now... He's in between them, like in between them. Yeah. And that's very hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I get what's happening. So disturbing. Uh, but yeah. Like, I, the visual is, funny. yeah. But I just want to say, as far as like what Song Hyun was doing before, I think that this would work better for softening than the flute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just needed to call Kong Wu all along. Because <laughs> Kong Wu this, all along. This is not going to work. <laughs> And is this him also having these feelings of guilt? Is he seeing this mm-hmm. too? Like, was the cupboard overflowing from his perspective yeah, as well? Yeah, right. I definitely That's think what I thought. they're both being tortured by what happened. Yeah. It's intense, man. Yeah. yeah. Afterwards, they each lay on opposite sides of the small waterbed, on their sides facing away from each other. But in the middle is Kong Wu, laying on his back, happy as fuck, with the giant rock still on his chest. At least he's having a good time. Yeah. He's having a great time. <laughs> After we see an exhausted Teju sitting with a still catatonic Mrs. Ra at the park, we see her sitting on top of Young Du, the dam manager. Yeah. Falling asleep in the middle of showing him the flesh. Without a word, she just gets up and leaves and he calls after her asking how anyone can do it five times in a row. So at what point was there a break between her and Song Hyun to where she's sleeping with another dude who is also her best her friend's, best friend's husband. husband? Yeah, I don't I don't know. And she's clearly missing him because he can't do it like he can. Right. <laughs> you don't have that vampire. No, yeah. he's like, who the fuck is <laughs> he able to <laughs> <He doesn't> <laughs> get up and go? No, he does not. But that night, she runs into Song Hyun on the street on her way home. He sniffs her body and looks devastated. I will say, vampire or no. What dro- if you saw this <laughs> on the street? Well, <laughs> dropping down to a knee to sniff. I, mean, like, uh, I feel like that's <laughs> way out of line. He it's had honestly, <laughs> Yeah, if you've got to do that, you already know what's going on. That's some on. bullshit behavior, uh, first of all. <laughs> I mean, th- were they on a break? <laughs> <laughs> But we cut to them blowing out candles for Mrs. Ra's birthday. They blow out the candles for her and clap, but she's still catatonic. Teju remarks that she never once threw her a birthday party and slaps the woman across the face. In return, Song Hyun slaps Teju across the face. (laughs) I just... What the fuck is that? It's all falling apart. It is. (laughs) That was great. (laughs) Teju says that Mrs. Ra always gave her plenty to eat, though, so she puts frosting from the cake into the woman's mouth. Song Hyun tells her to thank Mrs. Ra, which she does with a kiss on the cheek. She goes to Song Hyun and asks if he can't just kill the detective. Isn't he thirsty? I can't believe that she said yeah. that. She's like, look, you can take care of this right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How hungry are you, really? Wow. Or thirsty, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's the whole point <laughs> of the movie. Thirst. The film is called Thirst. My bad. 
He only tells her in response that he'll throw her her first birthday party this year. She gets excited, but quickly remembers that she doesn't even know when her birthday is. She kisses him, but asks who made him boss. He tells her what to do, and now he's even hitting her. Kong Wu never laid his hands on her. Ooh. Ooh. Record scratch. Yeah. Up. You have fucked up yeah. now. <laughs> the smile drops from Song Hyun's face, and Taeju immediately realizes what she said. She grips onto him, but he wrestles her away. Without a word, Song Hyun easily lifts up Mrs. Ra in her chair and takes it to the bedroom. He comes back and asks her plainly, Did Kong Wu beat you or not? She asks if it matters, and he's like, yeah, that's why he died. She tells him he's just making excuses and that he would have killed Kong Wu anyway so that he could have her for himself. I'm okay. Here's where I'm coming from on this. Mm -hmm. She, if we're going to be like the technicality bullshit, right. she never really lied to him. Okay. Now, look, she misled she did him. Say not off she yeah. severely yeah. misled him. She severely misled him. But if she were to go back and say, I never told you that he did, she's Fuck not off. wrong. Fuck off. Now, look, no, look, <laughs> let me, let me That's just. That's like going to hold up in a corner. <laughs> it's not. But here's, here's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is that. If she wanted to rationalize it in her head, she could say that. She could, but she didn't flat out say, right, Kong right. Wu beats me. I'm not vouching for her yeah, because no. this is fucking bullshit. Yeah. She's the real villain. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. As of, what does it say? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I understand what she was attempting. She hates her fucking life. Right. Yeah. And she found a way out. Yeah. But she did mislead him into doing something that he probably never he would have done. Never done that. And I honestly think that him killing priest Roe was also a reaction to having already killed a man. I agree. Yeah. None of it would have happened. No, I, I think agree. that priest would still be alive. He'd be sucking the blood from that tube. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, he's got a keg back at the hospital. Yeah. He didn't kill him to drink. Tap it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He tells her that she can't imagine how hard he's tried not to kill anyone. There's a bloodthirsty beast inside of him, but he was able to tiptoe around it. The reason Kong Wu died was because he wanted to save her. She says that if he saved her, why is she living in a nightmare? She says that she stays up trembling at the thought of his cold hand touching her. Man. She runs to Mrs. Ra and tearfully tells her that Song Hyun is going to kill her. And this is what she gets for treating a devil like a son. Song Hyun walks in and calmly asks her if he did it alone. Kong Wu suddenly speaks up from the waterbed. Bloated with water, he reminds Taeju that all of this was her idea. <laughs> Smiling, he takes the rock off his chest and sits up to look at her. Taeju denies this, saying that not only was it Song Hyun's idea, but his idea was to kill mother and son. That, <laughs> yeah, that if this is true. Yeah. Mrs. Ra finally comes online and looks at Taeju. Taeju starts to scream and Kong Wu mimics her, but he's suddenly gone from his place on the bed. When Song Hyun gets up to look for him, he appears behind him and grabs on. He pulls, I loved this so much, mm -hmm. he pulls Song Hyun out of view for one second and when he comes back up, he's completely drenched and spitting yeah. out water. It's amazing. Again, this guilt yeah. Yeah. visualized. I will say again, going back to what we had said earlier, he wasn't blameless, Song Hyun, because he was just planning to straight kidnap yeah. her. I mean, he was, but, <laughs> that is, this is true. But I think that it would not have graduated to murder if not for her insistence. Yeah. So, they, I mean, they're both not great. <laughs> <laughs> They've both done some fucked up shit. Yeah. Taeju sobs and begs Mrs. Ra for forgiveness before turning on Song Hyun. She calls him a germ that infected their happy family and spits at him. She ripped his clothes off. Yeah. She, she did. And yeah. for like pushed and him. Yeah. Bitch, not, you were not happy. They might have been happy. You were not happy. Mm. Yeah, he was doing the whole ruler spanking. Yeah, leg, he was and to... she was like, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Too late. Yeah. He stares at her in disbelief and gives a fantastic line. You said I was cute, you cunt. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Is this his heartbreak? <laughs> the word yeah. cute. He's like, what? you were feeling me though. Well, he had probably never gotten that yeah. attention. He doesn't know what to do with it. He throws Taeju against the wall. Well, that's, <laughs> that's not what you do with it. <laughs> and Mrs. Ra begins to seize in her chair. Taeju grabs her and brings her to the floor, but Song Hyun pushes her out of the way and starts CPR. How did he do? I think his other one was better. <laughs> if I recall, I think I was really the distracted. The circumstances were better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything that was going on, I was so distracted that I wasn't monitoring for hand yeah. placement. <laughs> Taeju goes down to her on the floor, begging Mrs. Ra to just blink once to show that she forgives her. But Mrs. Ra stares at her, purposefully not blinking. 
Teju tries to drag her out of the room saying Song Hyun is going to drink her blood, but he stops her and she runs away. Why are you turning everyone against me, man? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's trash. She's just trying to spread the guilt around. Yeah. yeah. He catches her in the living room where she's just wrecking shit. Like everything's broken. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. She begs him to kill her, saying that she wants to go be with Kong Wu. He grabs her by the throat and begins to choke her, asking her if she's sure. She is, and he cries as he strangles her, eventually breaking her neck and causing blood to pour from her mouth. Well, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> I don't think I've been more shocked by yeah. this film. <laughs> <laughs> like that surprised the hell out well, of me. She said, I he mean, was like, yeah. are you uh, sure? And that's religion, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> I love how I just said religion. Religion, yeah, Not yeah even. just as a whole. Yeah. When she falls dead to the floor, Song Hyun holds her and sobs, but is quickly distracted by her blood. He licks it up before slitting her wrist and basically drinking it from the tap. (laughs) He stops abruptly when he sees Mrs. Ra still half dragged into the hallway, staring at him. He drops Teju's arm, ashamed, and slits his own wrist. He tries to drip blood into Teju's mouth, but his arm immediately heals. He's finally able to place his wrist into her mouth after slicing it again, and he holds it there until she latches on. Teju drinks from his wrist, and he grabs hers and continues to drink from her, supplying her with more blood as Mrs. Ra watches from the floor in the hallway. I think in vampire circles, this is called a sucksty (laughs) nine. That was good. Thank you. (laughs) In vampire circles. Like I know. I've met, (laughs) met plenty of vampires. That was... The visual. Yeah, I I don't know why he did that. I uh, any of it or something specific? <laughs> no, with her, she's a monster. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, what are you doing, man? He feels guilty, and then like yeah, the guilt but- was doubled when Mrs. Rouse looking at him like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "No, wait, I can bring her back. Yeah. Yeah, back. It's fine. This it's is fine. like almost never happened. Yeah, like, it's Just fine. pretend." <laughs> I think that I mean it's kind of the desperation because now I mean what does he have at this point? nothing nothing go yeah. make new friends go make, yeah, yeah. like you're gonna I live mean, forever yeah, man be you got, all got a lot of chances man, yeah. yeah so i mean it, it sucks that he wasn't going to help his priest friend yeah but in this moment of desperation he's turning her yeah, yeah. saving her which is yeah, all he again. ever wanted to do and that kind of goes to what she said it could be honestly possibly Either way. yeah yeah it might be a little bit of a savior complex yeah because he was willing to go risk his life for the trial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, being able to save her, I don't know, man. She might, there might have been some wisdom in her. Maybe. Uh, being an asshole. Being an yeah, asshole, maybe. yeah. But for a grand finale, Song Hyun slices his tongue and kisses Teju. When he tries to pull away, she holds him to her, continuing to drink until he pulls her away from him. The calluses on her feet, the cut on her wrist, the hole from the hook in her ear, it all heals. She looks up at him and he tells her in English, happy birthday, Teju. <laughs> Mrs. Ra is like, what the fuck? <laughs> what am I seeing? <laughs> am I dead? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? This is hell. Later, Song Hyun paints the living room as white as daylight as Teju instructs. She's in the kitchen humming and happily admiring herself in the mirror. She's grating an apple and when she slices her finger, she watches the cut heal itself and the blood disappear from the bowl mm-hmm. of grated apple. Mrs. Ross sits in her chair in the bedroom, eyes wide, but when she hears Teju coming, she closes them. Teju clips Mrs. Ross' nose shut and forces the grated apples into her mouth and down her throat. Teju commends her. She puts shoes on her feet and tells her that from now on, we're wearing shoes in the house like they do in the States because she's in charge now. <laughs> Mrs. Ross is also going to sleep through the day and eat at night like she and Song Hyun do. She notices one of Mrs. Ra's fingers move, but Mrs. Ra stays frozen, her mouth still wide from being fed. Teju turns her toward the TV and closes her mouth, telling her to watch TV while she's gone because a scary movie is going to be on. Oh, cool, man. (laughs) Yeah. Can I say what I thought went on? Yeah. Mm. I thought that the drop of blood sunk deeper into the apple stuff. And she drank she it? She drank it, and that's what gave her body the thing for the her finger to move. Uh-huh. Like a little bit of, just a little taste of vampire yeah. power. But I don't know, because it doesn't really, it doesn't make sense because it looks like it disappears. Yeah. It does look like it disappears. I mean, you could be right, though, because... She, di- I took it as because she's already more conscious than what she wants Teju to think. Yeah, because mm. she's already cognizant, and then she hears her coming. And she's like, "Oh, I'm asleep." Yeah, that's so true. It, it feel- I mean, and she's always been kind of like this. Yeah. yeah. So why so is that going to change? Yeah. But outside, a car drives down the road. Its headlights illuminating a figure crouched on the side of the road. The figure reveals itself to be Teju. 
She stands in the middle of the street and giggles just before the car crashes into her. See, this is where things go off the rails. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. This, big time. This dude thinks she's just a large boulder the size of a small boulder, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> on the side of the road, <laughs> tries to get out of the way. Yeah, and I now I knew she was gonna go do some dumb shit. It's it's upsetting. Yeah. It's upsetting. Honestly, the reason it's upsetting to me is because this is the only like bit of freedom she's ever had. Right. Yeah, and this is what she's doing with it. Well, yeah. I mean. It kind of looks like fun. You well, know, if you couldn't really get hurt, why not? I mean, if you have no morality. <laughs> I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. If you don't care about innocent human life, but you know. Well, he didn't get hurt. He. Well, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> not, not yet. Yeah. Oh, you're saying being hit by a car would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, so long. No, <laughs> Just yeah. run away. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. if you can't get hurt, why not? I'm going to jump and now off that's the building a story, and see what's going on. That's a story on. that that guy's going to tell for the rest of his life. Yeah. Yeah. And then she and just she fucking waved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, lady. Yeah. <laughs> but the motorist rushes out of his car to check on her, only for him to punch him in the face, knocking him out. She makes sure no one's looking and tosses him into the trees before flying in after him. She plunges her spring scissors into his neck, and when the blood starts to pour, she drinks greedily, squealing with delight. When she's through with him, she quickly and frantically digs a hole to bury him in. The way that she was just fucking Uh, flinging that dirt, I was like... See, she took to being a vampire very quickly. She did. Oh, yeah. Like, all the worst ways. Yeah. I, I was thinking... So because they don't have fangs, are her scissors taking the place of the fangs the way to, like, they're get it open? Yeah, oh, maybe. poking them in the neck? It's still the two. Yeah, the way they're oh, shaped. Yeah. That is true. I like that. Because I was I was like, man, because when he had bit her when they were doing the thing, mm-hmm. it, was just, a it bite. was just a bite. And she was like, oh, that fucking hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But here she's like, you know what? I got a better idea. To be a little bit yeah. easier. Yeah. <laughs> I thought um, the way vampirism kind of works with turning someone right they kind of become your responsibility right mm-hmm. which i mean it makes these dynamics even more tricky yeah because then she's kind of become his child in a way yeah because he has to kind of look out now that's the thing about vampires is that when you turn someone you're supposed to kind of guide them yeah mm-hmm. look out for them and teach them how to do the right shit he kind of just set her loose he's like yeah. i'm gonna go paint the living room <laughs> yeah <laughs> you do whatever you want to do so i mean it's just it's a lot of shit because i mean we learn preacher yeah you gotta fucking they're babies yeah yeah Yeah. but when Teju returns song hyun is there waiting for her he licks her lips and immediately knows what she's done she jumps onto the car telling him that she's not ashamed he tells her that he already told her that he would take care of supplying them with blood he's assisting people in committing suicide he knows a lot of people that want to do that from his time when he was taking confession and if he runs out of people that he knows he can just go to the internet he's got it all figured out (laughs) see and then this is where i'm like okay maybe you're not as good as i thought you were well i mean uh, that's a whole other you know Kevorkian conversation. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, I think as long as he's not coaxing these people. Yeah, no, no, he said they want to, and their blood's just gonna be sitting there. I guess, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is just dark. It's, it's, a, there. it's a real thin line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Remember three day or what was it? Three weeks. I was getting shit for the killing. Oh yeah, zombies. zombies. In three weeks that we knew, but and you're over yeah. here like <laughs> <laughs> the blood's just gonna yeah, go to waste. Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> But he rationalizes that if he helps them, their death can be peaceful. Teju laughs in his face, telling him that if they just give you their blood, there's no fun in it. She jumps on top of a building and brandishes her spring scissors at him, saying that it tastes so much better this way. Okay, so I guess if he's saying it's peaceful, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. As long as he's not like, hey, yeah. you, <laughs> should. you should. Yeah. Die. Like that's yeah. then fuck you forever. Yeah. Yeah. But no. fuck her forever yeah. for what she's saying yeah but i mean she's making a good point though. no she's I mean, not no she's not well no, she's not. i don't want to play not. a video game that's like hey you won it's like, oh, did I, I didn't th- i didn't do anything for, but that's the difference in looking at it it's not supposed to be fun it's just supposed to keep them alive oh but she's a vampire they're both vampires yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well he should be doing the same thing not selling real estate well <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't a vampire no, yet when he was no. selling real estate no he was not i don't know if he ever, is he is he did, i think renfield <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what we're still I don't know. trying to figure out yeah. renfield. well we had said that dracula only dipped one thing in yeah, yeah. he was a weird he, in yeah. between he kind of yeah. fucked up he should have finished the job yeah. mm-hmm. well maybe he shouldn't have because this is what yeah, it is. this is what, is what happened. Happened. <laughs> i don't want to see a full power renfield yeah <laughs> 
But he flies after her, asking how many have to die for her taste. She calls him father, saying maybe 500. He chases her as they jump from building to building, reminding her that he's not a father anymore. He catches up to her and she tells him to stop acting so humane. He's not even a human. He's like, well, what are we then? And she's like, we're human eating beasts. Oh, Is God. it a sin for a fox to eat a chicken? I would be like, that's a great idea. Let's find some chickens. <laughs> <laughs> chickens have blood. Yeah. yeah. You just salt everything. I love you again. <laughs> <laughs> she continues on to another building. And when she sees that he's no longer chasing her, she tries to jump to another one. He grabs her leg, though, and brings her down, smashing her face on the building. I was Ooh. like, oh. No, that's what you get. That's tough. Yeah. That's what she gets, but it looked incredibly fucking painful. You remember, he's been a vampire longer. Yeah. yeah. He holds her upside down and tells her not to make him regret saving her. But she tells him whether he saves her or he kills her, he's going to regret it either way. I was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> She breaks up with him and he drops her onto the ground below. He joins her down there and tells her that she's the only one he's got now. I died laughing at her line. Yeah. She's like, he, I dump him and he drops <laughs> me. Yeah, the yeah. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That is good stuff. Um, so here, I enjoyed... So when I say it was a little slow, I don't mean it in a bad way. Like mm -hmm. Because this... So far from what I've seen, this is just fucking anime, but live action. <laughs> so, I mean, you've got to, there's got to be some kind of anime that'll, you know what I mean? That'll interest you to watch it with me. Are uh, you really just using the show? Yeah, to a, yes. <laughs> I didn't realize <laughs> but, what was happening. Well, no, but they, the, the jumping from the building, it does look good, but I wish it was just a little faster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because... Uh -huh. It's like they're in the moment, but they're having full ass conversations while jumping from building. To <laughs> it's like, look, just just get there and fight. It's Is just it? like just for them. It's like yeah. She's walking away from him on the street and yeah. he's behind her. Yeah. But just vampire style. Yeah, but, vampire I, style. but I do love it. I mm -hmm. do like this. Uh, and like I said, it's. This is the vampire, them kind of pouncing from yeah. place to place, but not losing breath and still that. And I was like, this is this is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I did enjoy this, but yeah. I just would have liked a little more fighting. Or <laughs> it's better than that scene in Twilight when. She oh, <laughs> I, why does he call her a fucking spider monkey? Or something? Yeah, I don't. Know. Is that real or is that a meme? I don't. Know. I think it's real because it's so bad. I think it could be a meme. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I prefer this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But back at their house, there's a camera running in the window during the day, but at night it goes off and the lights inside the house come on. In their bright ass white living room, Teju lays on the couch covered in blisters. I was like, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. Ross sits in her chair, tapping her finger, but stops when Song Hyun comes in with a cold glass of blood. He closes Teju's nose and gives her a drink, but she spits it out. He just holds her. She says that he told her women were safe from EV, but he tells her that her blood is completely mixed with his now. When she asks if she's still a woman, he doesn't answer, and she projectile vomits blood all over the floor. That shot is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Probably my second favorite shot in the film. Because it's so white in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it kind of hints at what the vampirism has done to yeah. the family. Yeah. yeah. This pristine thing or whatever. I mean, they yeah. weren't the greatest. Yeah. No. But their life was normal. Yeah. Ish. Albeit shitty. Yeah. But I do want to say, I forgot to say this earlier, this entire time I learned from this featurette, this whole apartment is a set. Really? Yeah. Like I, the production design and the set designers are fucking incredible. I thought this was an actual building. It yes. looks like it. Yeah. Like they showed from like the window, like whenever they're sitting at the table talking, yeah. there's a man out there from the window holding a boom mic. Like it's not real. <laughs> That's crazy. I was blown away. Wow. It, I thought this was a, like a for real fucking building. Me too. Especially with the stairs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. That's cool. Not real. And uh, it goes to... Chung Jung Hoon's uh, cinematography, yeah, because the swirling camera around yeah, yeah. it all just seems it works. Yeah, it's amazing. But Song Hyun leaves to go get a doctor, and when he's gone, Teju looks over at Mrs. Ra and licks her lips. I was like, "Oh shit, you're next." Yeah. <laughs> when Song Hyun returns with the doctor, the room is just how he left it. The doctor stands over Teju, trying to speak to her, but she appears unresponsive. Suddenly, she stabs her spring scissors into his throat. Blood pours out and she grabs him and drinks, but Song Hyun leaves in disgust. 
Why do you keep helping her, man? He loves but her. I, yeah. yeah, but she just told you, if whatever you do, I'm going to be a pain in the ass. Yeah, I mean, well, then might as well be together. I don't know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, that's how you rationalize it. I, yeah. I don't know, man. All I do know is that that doctor thought he was bringing medicine. Yeah. Turns out he is the medicine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he's healing. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's living up to it first. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he wanted to do. Outside, he stands in the street, tortured by the sound of her feeding, but freezes when he sees a vehicle driving toward him. Calmly, he says, Teju, what day is today? <sighs> Upstairs, she hears this and stops feeding. We cut to the crew playing Mahjong. <laughs> Teju plays with them, laughing with her face now completely free of blisters, but underneath the table, she's clicking her spring scissors together manically. Young Du proposes a theory that eyes tell everything. You can tell what someone's trying to say, and if someone looks at something for more than four seconds, everyone automatically looks too. He looks over at Evelyn and says he's so good at reading eyes, that's why her Korean isn't getting any better. Teju asks if he can tell what Mrs. Ra is trying to say. It's like, bitch, <laughs> yeah. you're doing too much. <laughs> yeah. Play your cube, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, so. <laughs> <laughs> that song, Young. Yeah. <laughs> Watch you play your cube, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he says that mrs raw says that he has a winning hand which he proves and that she wants vodka he instructs evelyn to go get it but when he looks at mrs raw she looks frantic he asks if she really wants to play that badly and sung day proposes that she team up with evelyn using a system of blinks long for no and short for yes they do this evelyn holding up a, t a cube and, yeah. <laughs> and mrs raw blinks to choose it and everyone is thrilled that mrs raw is back in the game when evelyn tries to spoon feed her vodka which is hilarious yeah. they're like we got to get some drink yeah. in her <laughs> um she notices that mrs raw is tapping her index finger the nail is ragged and bloody and pointing toward a tile with the letter d on it Sure that she's trying to spell something out, Sung Day and Young Do try to help, but Teju and Sang Hyun just sit and they're like, no, she's not. Yeah. She's definitely not doing that. <laughs> when they get L, D, and K, Sang Hyun laughs and translates it as ladies delaying killing the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that made that me laugh so hard. Amazing. He's, he's fucking grasping yeah. out at straws, man. <laughs> With Mrs. Ra's blinks to guide them, they work out that the order is KLD. Young Du is like, killed? Uh, yeah. And Mrs. Ra confirms this. The celebration of figuring out what she's trying to say is short-lived, though, when they grow suspicious. Then Sung Day asks, killed who? And Mrs. Ra looks up at her shrine of Kong Wu. Teju tries to swoop in and say that it's just that Mahjong brings back memories of Kong Wu for her and that she's not the reason he died. She insists that Mrs. Ra go to bed. <laughs> she yeah. fucking completely loses herself dude, and picks man. up the chair with her still in it. And they're like, oh, wow, she's so strong. They're like, Teju's strong as fuck. Dude, you uh, fucking what? <laughs> all I could think about was that fucking meme where... Uh, Lawrence Fishburne smoking a cigarette and he's holding his face. Yes. I was like that. If anywhere there was a meme to be inserted yeah. right there. It's unbelievable. Because she picks it up and then's like, oh, oh fuck. fuck. Yeah. And puts it right Slightly back down. Puts it back down and like it did just back. happen. Yes. yes. <laughs> never. And but we all see that They treat happen. it like it never did happen. Well, because there's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> and what <laughs> sucked is that she was doing so well covering with the photo. Yeah. yeah. Like, look, we all miss Kong Wu. She's like, no, yeah. it's, not, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's time for you to go to bed. Yeah, go <laughs> and i will take you oh shit god damn That's, it. it's just uh, you blew it you yeah. done goofed <laughs> sung day tells mrs ra to stop torturing herself no one killed kong Wu. it was just a horrible accident but mrs ra looks squarely at sung hyun and Teju. sung day is like it's not like they killed <laughs> but he stops when he sees mrs ra blinking feverishly yeah. with tears running down her face yes 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 that was a lot Teju was cowering behind Song Yun, but she steps out from behind him and starts to laugh. Evelyn screams and sobs, and Teju does the same, clinging to Song Yun and l mocking Evelyn. See, she's kind of... <laughs> she's a fucking monster. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, boo yeah. fucking boo. <laughs> Song Yun quietly leaves the room and closes the door behind him. He begins to close the drapes in the blindingly white living room. He's like, some shit's about to fucking go down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the kitchen, Teju closes the drapes as well, calling them all selfish to insist on playing Mahjong while her family is grieving. Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> well, I know mom tried to, you know, say something. You just fucked those people up. Yeah. Off. Yeah. Like, we got to drink yeah. all these motherfuckers yeah. now. <laughs> drink. <laughs> it's your fault. See, I changed. I was going to say yeah. eat. <laughs> Sung Day calls her a little piece of shit and declares that he's leaving because shit smells. It doesn't scare. Yeah. Dude, I, I laugh so hard. He's like, I'm not, like, I don't care about anything. Yeah. It smells like shit in here, yeah. so I'm going <laughs> to. I'm out. Not as good a cover as he thought. No. As he takes a step for the door, Teju punches him in the fucking throat and his head rocks back unnaturally before he falls to the ground. That look. I gasped. Yeah, I was it like, oh shit. Shocked the shit out of me. Back into the left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Song Hyun watches as Young Du bursts from the kitchen and runs down the hall. He stops when he sees Song Hyun and opens a door only to find a closet with the doctor's body stuffed inside. Evelyn his wife yes comes running behind him but he opens the bathroom door and locks himself inside trapping her in the hallway yeah i don't <laughs> just a piece of shit yeah <laughs> he's like i'm trying to save me yeah. though yeah and there's room for both of them mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah it's like titanic all over again yeah this is some <laughs> bullshit song hyun picks up evelyn and places her in the closet locking her in there young dude tries to crawl out the window but can't and grabs onto the doorknob but Teju rips the bathroom door off the hinges she climbs onto young dude's back and starts to strangle him but song yan grabs her by her throat lifting her up and causing her to lift up young Du, only strangling him harder <laughs> i personally after what he did to his wife I think he kind of deserves to be in the camel clutch. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, she and had him good. He, yeah. he was, they were, he was cheating on Evelyn too. With her. Yeah. yeah. So fuck off. I know that they shouldn't be killing them, but young dude can go fucking, he, he fuck off. <laughs> like, <I'm done. laughs> Your anger is overtaken. I, I got no words. <laughs> fuck off. Song Hyun tells her to stop, but Young Du's neck breaks and he falls to the ground lifeless. Song Hyun continues to hold up Teju, but she wraps herself around him in a hug. He holds her for a moment until she bites him and begins to strangle him. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> she lets him go and he falls to the floor. She calls him an easy blood drinking coward and leaves. So to me, I guess that kind of explains why she was able to overpower him so easily. Yeah. I guess maybe the way you get the blood is different. Or that she's feeding more because she's getting it whenever she oh, wants yeah. it. Oh, yeah. That's true. I was like, he's been a vampire longer yeah. than you. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to fucking run my shit, okay? <laughs> but later, Young Du and Sung Dae are sitting against the tub while Teju drinks from Young Du's neck. She's frustrated when the blood stops flowing, but Sung Yun tells her that he's dead. His heart's not pumping anymore. But he advises her to cut off their ankles and hang them upside down over the tub. Gravity's just going to do the rest of the work. I was like, yeah. solid advice. Thanks, I He's guess. He's like, I yeah. have been doing this longer. <laughs> <laughs> he says they can keep it in Tupperware in the fridge. Just drinking some and throwing the body away is treating life too lightly. I like how he's rationalizing to himself that yeah. it's okay for them mm-hmm. to do this. But I mean, I guess that speaks to his kind of attempt at still being somewhat pure. Yeah. yeah. He's trying to find a good reason, even though it's still awful. Yeah. As he speaks, we see that Evelyn is tied up to a chair in the kitchen. She throws herself over and there's a knife close by on the floor. Teju steps out of the bathroom and Evelyn comes screaming and plunges the knife into her chest. Teju only smiles and tells Evelyn that it's all over now. Isn't she like, I could never have made all that kimbap by myself. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, thanks. Like you really (laughs) came in clutch. But but the thing to me though is that it's kind of a fucking fuck you to another vampire myth because she kind of stabs her in the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's like, oh, that's not She's like, okay, and? Give me some garlic too. (laughs) I love that shit. Yeah. Well, it it wasn't a steak. It was a steak knife. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> so she got the uh, instructions wrong do, yeah. the, do the rules honor puns <laughs> <laughs> song hyun interrupts just as Teju takes the knife out of her chest and holds it up to evelyn he tells her to listen to him very carefully he says she needs to run away because when four people go missing they're gonna come here and search the house as they speak, we watch Teju go downstairs for a saw, and when she comes back up, she catches Song Hyun drinking from Evelyn's neck in the living room. He rationalizes that she already had her fill when she asks him what he's doing. He covers Evelyn's face with his coat and takes the saw from Teju to get to work in the bathroom. He stays saving people. Yeah. yeah. 
We cut to them in the car, driving down a dark road. Teju has scarves wrapped around her, her like hair, like they're in the 50s going for a convertible ride. <laughs> but I think it's because like the sun is going to come up soon. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how he got them in the car in the first place. Like I wouldn't trust. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like right? He's like, let's go for a ride right now. Well, you told her yeah. they need to run, and he's. I mean, oh, he's right. Yeah, that's true. He's. I mean, yeah, that's fair. Mrs. Yeah. Ra is still catatonic and staring in the back seat. Teju asks where they're going, and Sanghyun stops the car and gets out. As he takes off walking, Teju screams after him that the sun is going to be coming up soon. At that camp of his like fans, mm -hmm. a woman screams in one of the tents, and an alarm sounds. When the other people go to check on her, they find Sanghyun laying on top of Whistle Girl with his pants down. Like they're down. He yeah, hangs yeah. Dong. <laughs> He stands up and leaves the tent only for them to hit him and throw things at him. And he leaves them sobbing. Now, in his prayer, he specifically mentioned no one remembering him or praying for him or mm -hmm. anything like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is him being like, I need to make them hate me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I took it that way. I also took it as like his kind of idealized version of love. Right. Turn into bullshit. And so he's kind of ruining their idealized version wow. of him. Wow. Yeah. Like, so he's kind of taken away his own legend. No, yeah. yeah. You know? Well, yeah, either way. Yeah. I'm not what you think I am. Let me show them I'm a monster without showing them I'm a monster. Yeah. yeah. Even though I did fly in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't explain that. Yeah. <laughs> But at the house, we see the evidence of their crimes, including Young Du and Sung Day strung up with no ankles and bleeding into the tub. Evelyn wakes up sobbing and pulling the coat from her face, but she gets up and walks away. Mm -hmm. In the car, Teju notices blisters on Song Hyun's face and asks if he didn't have his fill from Evelyn, but he doesn't answer. So he was faking? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what I, yeah. Uh, that's why he threw the coat over. Yeah, so he's like, no, it's fine. Don't look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, You're full, right? Yeah. <laughs> said he stays saving people. Yeah. Oh, I did want to say, according to IGN, they had an interview with Park Chan Wook. Mm -hmm. And he had said that after the first showing in Korea, literally every question from every journalist there was about Song Kang Ho's nudity in that scene. Because apparently in South Korea, male nudity is not as shown on film as mm -hmm. it is in well not even in the states really right. yeah but it's very not normal to be mm -hmm. showing that on screen and a star of his caliber doing yeah. it right right so they were like questions aplenty they're like are you trying to appeal to the can film festival audience whenever you go there like they were trying to figure out why he did it yeah but it just made sense in the scene it's yeah. such a power oh i read that this is the first mainstream south korean film that I was, I was just flat out going to say how to dick in it. I knew yeah. that, had, that had full frontal male nudity. Well, yeah. then that makes I sense to all the questions. Edit out the part where I said how to dick in no, it. No, it's staying in. <laughs> well, you just said it again. So, <laughs> Damn it. That's kind of insulting, though, because this is such a powerful film. For that to be and your they're like, only. Yeah, 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 yeah. About the dick, though. <laughs> I'd be like, Get what out. were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you do that? <laughs> I was thinking I was a vampire. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so any more questions? Because I'm thirsty. <laughs> Song Hyun finally parks the car as Don approaches. He breaks the key off in the ignition and caresses Teju's sleeping face, but she wakes up when he gets out of the car. She immediately consults her watch and goes to get Song Hyun. He throws the keys and lets her drag him back to the car, but when she gets behind the wheel, she realizes that she can't start it. She gets up and runs around, looking across deserted roads and fields, but when she tries to run straight ahead, she sees that they're parked at a cliff, looking over the vast sea. She stares at the crashing waves before walking back over to Song Hyun. She throws luggage and containers of blood out of the trunk before dragging him and putting him inside. She gets inside with him and closes it. Song Hyun stays for a moment before kicking the trunk door clean off the car. <laughs> He's like, nah, bitch. <laughs> Teju goes to get it, getting back in the trunk and placing the door back in its place, only for Song Hyun to take it back off and walk toward the sea. Teju flies over to him and the two fight over the trunk door. Teju literally breaking his fingers off of it in the process. She breaks his arm, the bone completely jutting out of his skin. Mm -hmm. But Song Hyun just uses his other arm to toss the trunk door into the sea. I love the shot of it flying into it. Yeah, yeah it's like you're not getting that back. No, he didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> He goes back to the car and places a cell phone in Mrs. Ra's lap with her hand resting over it, the, the hand with the moving finger, mm -hmm. and puts blankets on top of her. When Teju tries hiding under the car, he moves the car to the cliff. I love the overhead shot. Yeah, of her laying yeah. there. She's like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> he sits on the hood and looks out over the sea. 
Finally defeated, Teju joins him. She takes off her own shoes and puts on a pair of his from a suitcase. This, that broke like, my heart. Fucking broke my heart. Uh, same. Yeah. <laughs> He puts his arm around her and offers her the rest of his blood from a thermos. I mean, I guess it's not his blood, but yeah. Yeah. blood from his thermos. Just some blood. Yeah, which she shares with him, which I was surprised. She didn't just drink it all. Yeah. yeah. See, I mean, there's still some... Of her in there, the shoes and the sharing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, now that she realizes that, you know... It's done. Yeah. She gazes up at him and he tells her that he wanted to live with her forever and ever. He says, together again in hell then. But she says, when you're dead, you're dead. But it's been fun, father. She starts to cry as the sun rises. Mrs. Rob watches from the back seat as the sun comes up over the sea. With tears in his eyes, Song Hyun bravely looks out at the sea that appears to be red as blood in the rising sun. Mm -hmm. He holds Teju and they stare into each other's eyes as their faces begin to melt and burn. He is stoic and silent, but Teju screams and clings to him. Their bodies smoke and burn until they are both motionless, charred corpses, both wearing his shoes. Eventually, Teju's feet fall off at the ankles, and the film ends on a shot of his shoes sitting on the grass. We hear the crashing of waves as the credits roll. So, what did you guys think of Thirst? A uh, very different take on vampires. Mm-hmm. Um, I did enjoy this movie, and the ending is very romantic. Mm-hmm. I love it. It is. Uh, I know we said it at the very beginning. I'd never heard of the movie, didn't know it existed or anything, and I'm glad that I do now. Yes. Very, very good movie. Thank you to Patreon for sure. Yes. Uh, voting it in. I, l- I think I loved this movie. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say I liked it, but I think I loved it. Honestly, you know, everything leading up to where we finish the film Mm -hmm. is brilliant and then the ending is literally the perfect thing that could have been done Mm -hmm. right i can't think of a better way to end this film well because he's doing what priest row wanted to do Uh uh-huh i mean it's there's just so many facets to it and narrative like arcs closing Mm -hmm. perfectly and i mean also it feels kind of like when you look at romance park chan wook said that he wanted to look at this film as a romance film without the romanticism and I feel like it kind of gives a very real look at love. And this ending to me, it's almost like everybody I'm sure has had like a failed romance in their mm-hmm. life. And there are little things that will remind you of the beginning of that and what hope you had and where it could go. And so to end on the shoes, which is where it all started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It takes you back to that beautiful moment where he gave her what nobody else had. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just brilliant. I can't think of another word to say, but brilliant. Mm hmm. And like JP said, it's a really remarkable vampire story. Yeah. It is. It's incredible. What really struck me was when we were talking about Song Hyun looking like a completely different person. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Ra does too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like the duality and the dichotomy of each. Ca- it's almost like everybody had to play two roles. Mm-hmm. Like where they start and where they become are two mm-hmm. completely different people. I think about Mrs. Raw running up to the the window and knocking and, yeah. and her talking shit and laughing and drinking and, and what she becomes mm-hmm. and Teju, you know, being so meek and quiet and her huh. talking shit to him yeah. and jumping from building to building. And it's just, it's and so fucking Merkin fools yeah. without yeah. any well, remorse. And it, and it happens in such a way that it's like not, uh okay that's not even the character we just met but it's like oh my god look what they've become yeah. like it happens in such a way that it feels n- natural and even kong Wu. yeah you get him yeah. being the asshole mm-hmm. but then you get these weird moments of him being very caring yeah. yeah and then you get him being this haunting vision yeah like everybody has so much to do here it's just it's incredible and just visually it's so stunning mm-hmm. but to have all that the talent from i mean it's just i i'm amazed by it i watched it like i said that first time before and i've watched it twice doing this and yeah it's it gets better every time i watch it even Mm -hmm. though i know what's coming because the ending is so perfect and just the the shoes man i don't know know. it's just it gets me because i'm like she's a fucking monster yeah but i still feel sad yeah that this had to happen that this is the way that it has to end and it's sad that he puts words to it where he said that he wanted to live with yeah. her forever yeah. and they could have yeah i'm getting choked up <laughs> <laughs> but i guess we can go from there into ratings okay and it's it's to me it's just an amazing film i want to go and watch everything that park chan wook has ever done yeah um i want to go watch everything that 
Song Congo has ever done. <laughs> yeah. um, it just, it, it blows me away. It blows me away every time that I see it now. And you do notice stuff about, you know, his prayer and he talks about his fingernails being ripped. Yeah. Apart. I mean, it, it happened like it's a lot of forecasting in like this spiritual way. What is actually going to happen? Yeah. One thing I did want to point out that I forgot is that he asks Jesus to take away his cheeks so tears may not roll down them. The first thing the son kisses is his cheeks. See, mm-hmm. Man, it's just... And you notice something every time you watch it that yeah. you didn't notice the first time and or the previous time. It's just kind of the gift that keeps on giving to me. Right. I'm just I'm in awe by it. <laughs> and it's it, I feel like I felt every emotion watching this. Yeah. I mean, literally, I was angry. I was yeah. sad. <laughs> I laughed. I mean, it's just it's enthralling. It's just an incredible film. I'm thinking about the pure shock as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Park Chan shook. <laughs> is me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> sorry. That's very good. But, uh, no, it's just incredible. And so I'm going to jump all the way out on the ledge here. Mm-hmm. And on a scale from one to 10, bothersome blisters. I am going to give Thirst 10 out of 10 bothersome blisters i know that there are we are left with questions but the film is so good i don't fucking care <laughs> like i don't i don't care what vampire went to go give do a civic duty and give blood i don't care <laughs> i don't care where it all came from yeah. i don't want to hunt the vampire down i want to stay in this really confined story about these two tortured people and their influences on each other right. good and bad um yeah, I'm amazed by it, but I'll shut up and I will now open up the floor. Um, no, it, it's a really good movie. I did enjoy it. Uh, I unfortunately do want to know where <laughs> it came from. It's not, I wouldn't say I would dwell on it a lot, but I mean, I do want to know. Right. I, on the cool, I'm like, you just fucking had this sitting around or, you know, like just you said, from yeah, the wrong just like, yeah. yeah, like, oops, <laughs> no, where'd you get that from? Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it, it's a very, very good story. And I do like the fact that like you're saying how they changed, like she was, you know, felt like she kind of was defeated. And then she was a vampire and she's like, well, I'm going to fucking wall out now, you know? Which, oh, and she did. Which, oh, yeah. And then he tried to, you know, do right, and he kind of kept making things worse, or he kept, which I get it because I would be both. You know what I mean? If I was treated bad, and then it was like, hey, check this out. No, it's definitely Who's, relatable. Yeah, it's like, oh man, I go act a fool. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Or you're trying to keep doing right, but everything you do seems to be making things worse. You know. Uh, but the ending was good as well. I'm glad that that's what well, it was. It's not like. Or did they? You know, it's like no, they're, <laughs> they're yeah, gone. They're yeah. gone. But yeah, this this movie was a surprise. I do like the kills, uh, the take on the vampires, them being able to still have ref- him having a reflection and still being like, look, I'm I still am human. I'm just a vampire too. Mm-hmm. Which I guess the reflection would kind of symbolize that he's still kind of human there, the two sides. Yeah. He's not all the way gone because his reflection's not gone. Yeah. But if you decide to watch the movie again, I would definitely watch it with all you right. again. That's uh, good. But in saying all that, on a scale from one to 10, bothersome blisters, I'm going to give Thirst an eight. Wow. I, uh, I did, I like I said, I don't know anything about the movie, so this is the first time watching it, and I haven't watched it like sitting down and without having to pause or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but from what I watched, that was a fucking ride. Yeah. And I can't wait to watch it without having to pause it because that was some shit. <laughs> and that movie is good. Very, very good. And again, Patreon, thank you. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Kristen, thank you for yes. making mm-hmm. my wife watch it and <laughs> recommending it. And, and we got to benefit and everybody else gets to benefit now. And, very good movie. Yeah. Very good movie. I couldn't agree more, honestly, both yeah. of you. I think whenever I look at this film, whenever it began, yeah. and I knew from the first shot that it was going to be something right. great. Like special is yeah. how it feels. Yeah. And I don't know how I knew that. <laughs> well, for me, honestly, like I said real quick, was 
when the beginning started and then it looked like the leaves were to me that was the first thing i said to myself was are those leaves dancing so i was like okay i need to pay attention because if you don't pay attention and notice the way those leaves were moving i'm gonna miss something uh-huh. yeah so after that my mind was pay attention everything is going on and i think that's important because i mean when you have a director that has that much care and attention to composition right where little things like that you're like i need to know everything yeah, yeah. you know you're watching a very 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 good and well crafted film oh yeah and i think that anything park chan wook does like you had said nay i'm i'm watching yeah. it i really want to dive into his revenge trilogy yeah me too i've only seen an old boy his out of old it. boy mm-hmm. oh man oh yeah, yeah. because it- <laughs> Old yeah. boy is horror. It's, yeah. Old boy is not a horror film. <laughs> it but is horror. We should cover it. It's a great it's movie. A good film. It's yes. not horror, but I'm it's being fantastic. Dragged. They're gonna cut my um, mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I mean, for me, on the positive side, the performances and the characters, I care about these people. Yeah, and I care what happens to them and the trials that they go through and everything in between. Oh yeah, I think that is just down to really good writing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the story is great, as we've said. So many genres and themes that it's hopping in and out of. Uh-huh. And that's not easy to navigate all that. You have to be a skilled hand Yeah. from the performance side and from the writing and directing side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As I said before, the cinematography, yeah. yeah, set design, production design. There's something special to me about how much the red pops. Yeah. The blood is so important mm-hmm. that it stands out. And we didn't even really touch on how drab it is at the beginning and how much blue comes in yeah. later on. Like, it's just wow. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you could almost think about the blue being underwater, like Kong Wu. Ooh. Right. So, I mean, the colors have. We're importance. all in the sunken yeah, yeah. village. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> but I think that I agree with JP. Not that I need, like he said, I don't need to see a vampire fight with uh, the head vampire that fucking left the blood at the, yeah. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> but I, I'm very curious to know how a vampire's blood ended up at this lab. Just I like something. how just how one something. thing. Priest Rowe was like, don't you want to go ask? And he's like, no, it'll be bright. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but no, go ask. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, no. The sun's going to come uh, out. Yeah. And I uh, look, I know. <laughs> I don't know. He could call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have phones. This isn't fucking like, come on. Uh, or just be a bat and fly yeah. out. <laughs> Uh, something <laughs> jesus <laughs> and i don't know if that's nitpicky or what but <laughs> i i feel like i'm very and that honestly speaks to how good the film is that they present something that you really want to know yeah like if it's a bad film i don't give a fuck how the blood yeah you know? it's yeah. all just trash yeah. Yeah. yeah so i mean that's really the only negative i can think if i can even call it a negative uh this film for me i can't give a perfect 10 only because i i think i have to grow into loving it more mm-hmm. yeah a 10 is ki- kind of hard to dole out but I think for me, out of 10 bothersome blisters, I feel very confident giving Thirst 9.5 bothersome blisters out of 10. I think in time, this film will be a 10 for me. Right. As it should be. I think well, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll grow to appreciate it even more than I already do. No, it's incredible. Right. And it really does. It holds secrets for you every time you watch it. Yeah. I didn't I kind of feel like I sounded like Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does. yeah, it does. What's the deal with things <laughs> or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I doubt his material even has Ever? that. In it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all from us at Podmortem. What would you rate thirst and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the Podmortem. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at Blood and Smoke, at Real Streeter 84, and at Travis MWH. Please consider pledging to our Patreon and stay tuned until after the music for a special shout out to our Wendigo Getter patrons. And remember, even when your own intentions are pure, giving in to your temptation may come back to bite you. Until next time. Thank you for staying tuned for our special thank you. Yeah. Yes. When to go get her. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> okay, that's enough. All right, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I tell you that's enough, and you know mine at the end is going to be gonna- way worse. <laughs> <laughs> A special thank you to Chris Ontiveros, Kristen Lofton, Megan Martinez, Kimberly Bass, Melanie Van Husden, Sophie Hodson, Anthony Jerome M., Jordan Nash, Kent Morton, 
Guy54, Lala Thomas, Travis Anisa Hunter, Miguel Myers ATX, Mandy, Jennifer Perez, Pierre Lombard, Allison O'Neill, Carissa, TJ Bronson, Gabrielle Trevino, Spooky Mom, Andy Teague, Applin on Tavares, Karima Rhodes, Antonio Huerta, Kimberly Kleindienst, Will Brown, Linda, Sydney Smith, Osvaldo Soto, Jonathan Booth, Bobby Holmes, Donna Eason, J.D. Rizak, Molly Gerhardt, Armand Spasto, Aaron Aguirre, Aggie, William Berry, Brittany Ramatar, Charity Oxner, Amanda Six, Mandy Rainwater, Garrett Rogers, Jordan Roberts, Danielle Peralta, Dylan, Melissa Sierra, Holly Bryan, Alex Schultz, Jordan Blevins, Michelle Moore, Liz Heath, Spencer Montalvo, and Pancake the Panda. Woo! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Quite a list. Thank yeah. you all so, so, so much. <laughs> and I have to say, you know that we adore everyone who listens, but we can't deny that y'all are in thirst <laughs> place. <laughs> I told you it was going to be worse. (laughs) (laughs) Until next time.